Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Nextlander podcast. Here we go. April. Bring it on, April. April 1st. Is, yeah, that's right. I'm Man. I'm setting a challenge out for April. Contentious adversarial relationship with April. You saw what happened to January, February, March, April. Come on, bring it. That's right. We just we leave a string of, of dead months in our wake. <laughs> they don't even exist anymore. Brad Shoemaker, how are the you? Corpse, the corpse of March is not even cold yet, April. That's right. That's right. I don't remember what happened in March. <laughs> it's just dead to me. It's gone. Brad, you are uh, you are remote today. How are you? Yes. I'm doing well. Remote, Ish. remote. Double remote. Uh, I mean, I'm... I'm fine. I, I didn't. I certainly didn't have to unexpectedly pull an all-nighter to get out here or anything. Well, <laughs> Thank you, American Airlines. Uh, before we dig into your uh, your travel, a uh, beautiful travel uh, ease in which you got from San Francisco to the East Coast, Alex mm-hmm. Navarro waiting patiently, mopping up water in his basement. <laughs> oh you, yeah, how are you, you doing? You know, April showers and what have you. Yeah, no, there's water. It's fine. Yeah, we yeah. know how to attack it now. Yes, pull the car- carpet back, put some towels down. We're taking it to the water. Nice, nice. Get rid of that water. Who needs it? Yeah, Arrakis, not us. No one. Yes, uh, Brad, you uh, you were almost in for a twenty four hour uh, uh, journey. From- almost, almost. Ended up being about twenty from door to door. Your story made me angry when you when you told it to me. What is going on? I don't know. With I feel like it just gets worse and worse. You, you- what is going on with air travel in this country? I mean, like to be clear. The side did not fall off of my plane. Okay, well that's like, that's a start. Like I'm certainly better off than some people. Uh huh. I cannot I cannot believe nobody has died due to multiple instances of airplanes literally losing pieces in flight. Again, so, you know, relatively, we're talking relative to the number of flights that go up. Any piece that falls off a plane, not a good news. We're pretty, again, pretty newsworthy. that's an extraordinary thing. Yeah, pretty newsworthy. I or it should anyway, be. I, I'm, I'm tired of the stories or people being like, "Well, you know, actually, you have more of a chance of uh, dying on the way to the airport." Be like, motherfucker, when the plane, the pieces of the plane are falling off, you can let me have this one, okay? When like, the door flies off of the plane recognize that's messed up okay and, and it's it's the helplessness for me because in a traffic situation at least let me pretend that i have a chance to jump out the window and survive yes also, if you jump out the window very... of the plane <laughs> there's agency there you don't have that on an airplane also they're not unless letting, you're the pilot they're, they're not letting me just fly the plane okay they're not letting me mm-hmm. like behind no. the wheel of the plane also if I, should they? <laughs> if I were driving and my door flew off my car also, hopefully you would stop and recognize like, okay, well, that's just not right. <laughs> that's uh, yes. that's just not the right thing. Anyway, yeah. your yeah. plane was intact, it but was, yes. severely all, all, that, all that is to say, yes, some a lot of other people have had it way worse in air travel snafus of, of late. Yes. I, mine was just the classic string of delays leading to missed connections, leading to, oh God, it's midnight in this airport and there are no more planes leaving. Oh, <laughs> and dude. I'm not in a city that I want to be in right now. Missed connections. Just Twice the, in two years now. Like, I've never, I, prior to two years ago, I had never spent the night in an airport before, and now that's twice I've gotten stranded in a foreign or unfamiliar city. So, as, uh, not, I, not, not, not at my destination. So, as you were telling me, the uh, you had a little bit of a delay getting out of San Francisco, but everything seemed to have been made it, up reaching the destination or your- Not, not quite everything, but enough. Enough. I think, like- yeah, we we sat on the plane for too long coming out of SFO, but there was still a chance, you uh-huh. know. Um, and the pilot, like five times over the course of the flight, was like, "Oh, I'm talking to control, like looking at another shortcut, like going to try to shave some time off." And like, sure enough, he got us there like ten minutes earlier than he said he would, which was awesome. So we touched down thirty five minutes before my connection left. Great. You know that feeling? Uh huh. Yep. It's all right. How Just fast enough can we deploy? I said like thirty-five minutes. Probably. I was going to say plenty of time. I'm stressing it a little. Yeah, but it's yeah. like yep. enough time. Hopefully. Yep. And I know how long it takes me to get to the gate I'm going to because it's in the little adjunct terminal because I'm taking a tiny, you know, sixty-person plane sure. to my final regional destination. I know that's a long haul. I'm gonna like I'm gonna be sweating like a pig when I get there, <laughs> but it's technically possible. Uh huh. And then we sat on the runway after we landed until. I deplaned one minute after my connection took off. I, I hate that story. I stepped That's out like of the jetway. That's like the most jetway. stressful thing. I literally looked at my watch and clocked it. I stepped off the jetway of my first flight one minute after my connection left. 
Because if because you were still we, in the we air, sat on the runway. If you were still in the air at that point, you, you can stop checking your watch. You've yeah. missed your connection. Yes. But I feel yes. like you're just checking your watch every like, second at that point. To like see if even the pilot it. sounded mad. <laughs> like after <laughs> after we came to a standstill and we're just stacked up waiting for a for a gate to park at. Yeah. He literally came on. He's like, he's like, well, I did my part. I got you here. I got you here. Like ten minutes. I, I shaved time. You know, like he was, he was very much like I went to a lot of effort to get you here to try to make your connections. And he was like, we're talking to, we're talking to the gate. Yeah. You know, we know a lot of you have tight connections. And sure enough, I saw quite a few people that I recognized from my flight milling around back and forth. I'm imagining uh, that, uh, that pilot for a while. beeping the horn. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Come on. A lot, a lot of. A lot of people spent the night in that city. That I'm night. sorry. But that I, stinks. That's a long that's, travel experience. But you got here I mean, safely. And yes, I'm here now. I yeah. just, you know, I didn't sleep last. I didn't sleep the one night. And then last night I was in bed for 12 hours, which Great. is like I may have never done before. That sounds I was actually asleep for most of that time. Kind of beautiful. Did you form any personal uh, bonds with any of the uh, other people who also did not make their destination? Shockingly, there were like five people. Like I said, this is a small plane. The connection was a small plane going to a small city, not an international airport. I was like, I'm going to be the only one missing this plane. There were like five other people there. Yeah. It was, I don't know. A lot of people coming from San Francisco to my final destination, Look, I guess. You're flying the weekend after Easter. I'm yeah. sure some people yes. are, are coming back. Um, that's, the only, the only, that's the only reason I was on such a late flight to begin with was there were no flights. I had to book this flight pretty late for because of changing circumstances and there were no flights Yeah, uh, on that day. So that's how I got stuck on this last flight because I assume Easter weekend, spring break, whatever. Yeah. People traveling. Yes, it does so. feel like a hex has been put on the concept of air travel. It's so in bad, this dude. Like, like the, someone cursed the I, air. I, I split a cab to. So I'll give the airline credit. I guess they still give hotel and cat and cab vouchers and stuff. Like mm-hmm. I was shocked when I went to customer service and had them rebook my flight for the next morning. First one out. I. They gave me. They gave me. A, I got a free hotel room and free cabs to and from. I do wonder though. Okay, that. I don't want to misplace blame or uh, praise on on any airline or agency, but I do feel like over the course of the last fifteen years, there have been bill of rights for for um, uh, customers for flying that do codify some things, in, so you're not totally stranded at an airport, or I think like you're about to get to left on a plane, sweating forever. Mm-hmm. You would hope. You would hope, but. The reason I mentioned the cab voucher is because I got in a cab. I got put in with a couple who had also missed their flight, which is a completely different flight. <laughs> or they didn't miss it. They didn't get to go. But the point is they were literally like shoving multiple customers from this airline into cabs together who had missed different flights or yeah. not gotten to. This couple was trying to go to Rome for their anniversary, had boarded the, like, what is that? A 14 hour flight or something? Sure. This, yeah. is, this is from the East coast. I don't know how long it is to Italy from, from the East coast, but something like that. Anyway, they got on that flight, sat on the runway for five hours due to first computer issue, then mechanical issue. Then by the time all that was resolved, the flight crew couldn't go anymore because they were over their hour limit. That's- and so they literally went to the airport, sat on an airplane on the runway for five hours or at the gate, and then got deplaned and had to go home and come back again the next morning. So that that is like... It's like, dude, I, I have not taken... I have flown a lot in the last two and a half years, and I don't, I've barely had a trip in that time that has not had some major delay hmm. or some screw up somewhere. Like, what is happening with air travel? Uh, probably more than we could possibly know or get into on this podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's the deal? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we, uh, I, uh, I have a friend who is a flight attendant, and she was over the house over the weekend, and um, she was talking about you know people talking to her about you know, the planes, uh, you know, like, okay, this, that, and she was like, I, I don't know. It's not our fault. <laughs> like we're not making them. Don't blame me. I, there's nothing yeah. I do can customer do. service. Basically. Like we yeah, are oh, not yeah, the yeah. engineers of the planes. <laughs> right. I can't tell you why that thing <laughs> fell off. Right. Oh, I mean, the problem is hundred percent systemic. Like, yeah. Yeah. Unless you want to talk about like, for example, the Boeing CEO or something in case you want <laughs> to put all this on one person in a specific context, but like the bigger problem of constant delays and constant, you know, messes logistical messes i guess it got to be a systemic issue yes um well glad you anyway be- yes thank you all, all that is to say between long trips and lack of sleep and dealing with family stuff here i have not played a lot, ton of video games this week okay well it was also a very busy weekend you know holiday weekend easter weekend um egg hunts gotta happen you know mm-hmm. weekend of game hunting for eggs um yeah that's a game <laughs> We did, uh, I mentioned this on the Ramblecast, but for our egg hunt in-house this year, 
we did um it, the way we do it in our house is uh you find an egg that egg leads you to the next it's got a clue inside of it that leads you to the next egg that leads it's a to point the, and click adventure game yeah it's kind of a yeah it's kind of a point and click adventure game you you open the thing it has a clue it leads you to the next it's a riddle mm-hmm. that leads you to the next egg and eventually after about eight of those you get your easter basket which is hidden this year my kids wanted us to ramp it up so i encrypted all the clues Whoa. and had a at a key that you had to use to decrypt the clue wow. first to cipher. get there. Yes, it was a cipher, and uh, that way they had to work together. It was just an offset cipher, so it would be like, um, you know, A equals J and so on and so forth, right? And then, the e, But each one was different. And then for the last one, I took it too far, and I knew I took it too far. I double encrypted it. So I, I encrypted it and then took that and then ran that through another encryption. And um, my daughter, who had run out of patience about clue five... <laughs> Um, just went and found the Easter baskets, uh, because it's a relatively small house. There's only a certain number of places and got it before my son had even finished the first encryption. I can, I can respect it. They, they so have no I. one to blame but themselves. Yeah. They oh. asked for this. <laughs> they, they said they take it up a notch. Here's what you brought. Uh, they did, uh, enjoy it. They said they enjoyed it and they said it was about the right level of, uh, fun for them. Uh, I still, um, you know, feign some, as, as much as I can without outright lying, be like, uh, may, maybe the Easter Bunny's a jerk and just likes encryption. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think they're past the Easter Bunny stage. Oh, my, I think you can super let that one go. My wife is very much like, your father did this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's his fault. Don't blame me. Just uh, be glad they don't make you wear the bunny costume. Yeah, I'd, weird. I'd do it. It's weird. Know. The Easter Bunny, bunny just happens to have the exact same interests as dad. <laughs> Yeah. He's also into encryption. Weird. Weird. He's always down in the basement. So <laughs> so are Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy somehow. Weird. It's the same wrapping paper. We just wrapped the gifts for our other family in. How did we get this? How did this come? Th- this one says from Santa and this one says from mom. I don't get it. <laughs> We've Does never doing done this from Santa on, on the gifts. Um, yeah, we didn't either. Yeah. Does doing this like scratch some kind of latent game designer itch for you at all? So... It's funny. I was when I was thinking of like, okay, what can we do? It, it was so late. Um, we had gotten done with everything. This is like eleven o'clock. Oh, it was after our D and D session, uh, so it was like mm-hmm. eleven o'clock or eleven thirty. I was already sad because of the way our D and D session God. went. Uh, and then, um, so it was like eleven thirty. I come upstairs. I'm trying to unwind. I'm like, oh right, we got to do these things. I'm like, okay, what kind of what kind of thing can I do to make this more interesting? And I did start going through every adventure game, FMV puzzle style thing to be like, look, we've played a lot of latent games. Do we do like matchsticks? Do we do like this clue can't sit next to this clue, but it loves wearing red hats. And finally I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do this offset cipher thing. That's, that's what we're gonna do. I'm not making a whole escape room out of this in the next 40 minutes. No, that's for next year. The, the hardest thing to do, I will say, is when you have a clue that leads to another clue, I have to put in like a matrix, like a spreadsheet, which clue goes where. And then so if you're hiding the egg with the clue that leads to the egg in the bathroom, you need to keep track of all that. Right. Like, OK, mm-hmm. egg in the sofa gets the clue that leads to the egg in the bathroom. And then that one gets the clue that le- otherwise you get you sequence break and you, you kind yeah. of fall out of it. Uh, it's like a little more complicated than I wish it were for a, a midnight on Saturday thing. But again, fun was had. Let no one say you do not put the work in. Uh, you know, I try, try to, try to, try to make Easter as easy on us and enjoyable on the family as possible. Make it feel special. Make it feel special. Lazy and special. Then we had uh, some some ham, and you know, uh, my parents came over, and the whole the whole thing. Uh, just just remember, when it's not enjoyable, it's probably building character. That's right. Yes. If you if you're not if you don't like it, it's probably good for you. Just like vegetables. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now we got a whole fridge full of. We had a big, not big, very small party for my son uh, on Saturday, in which he just wanted to have friends over and play video games, which I respect. Uh, and so I've got a fridge full of Easter leftovers and birthday pizza and stuff leftovers, which is kind of awesome. Sounds like a good week to me. Yeah. Sounds like like you're putting some ham on some pizza is what you're you're telling me. (laughs) I wish, I wish. Uh, anyway, that being said, that's a pretty long way to also say it was a fairly busy weekend. Not a Mm -hmm. ton of game playing going on there. 
Uh, but uh, to to mention some game stuff, I um we had to go through games that are good four player couch co op games for kids. Do you guys have things off the top of your head? You'd be like, okay, look, we got we're in a great age. This is twelve mm-hmm. years old. This is a like a good age for sitting down playing some couch co op stuff. And I'll, I'll throw out some starters out there just to get things out. Okay, Mario Kart was on the list. Um, sure. This is not a four-player game, but it, it was played for a bit. Nidhogg, they took turns. My mm-hmm. first answer, absolutely. Yep. Um, uh, uh, the um, the one where you can fart and swing around, uh, uh, Heave Ho. Heave Ho was on that list. Um, Samurai Gun and Duck Game were on it, but I don't think they played those. Towerfall. Will you go to jail if you show them Mount Your Friends? I mentioned Mount My Friends to my wife. Uh-huh. I did not mention the swinging dongs, but that's I f- kind of a key detail. Feel like they would at twelve years old, they'd all get a pretty good laugh at the swinging dongs. Would anybody? Oh, yeah, would that's the not parents the come in and be like, "What are you playing?" Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. So um, do it. Definitely. So definitely do it. Uh, you guys have any other things that I, uh, that should have been on that list? Man, is um, Rock Band off the table? Rockman was probably off the table. That's okay, all fair. set up in the attic. Yeah, no, that's completely fair. Uh, the cooking one uh, um, was on the list. Uh, Overcooked. Um, Overcooked. That was on the list. Uh, you know, a lot of these things we've played before. A spider hack, obviously, on the list. It's mm-hmm. a good one. Um, so out of all of them, biggest hit, and probably not surprising for kids this age, Jackbox. Oh. Ton huh. of ton of Jackbox funk. Everybody's okay. got. Like, we have iPads. They borrowed phones from parents. Some people had phones. Um, you know, still a good time to just goof. As or as the kid would say, kids would say they were cooking their friends or mm-hmm. uh, a lot of mm-hmm. roasting going he, on. He cooked. He cooked with that one. Uh, hold on, let him cook, uh, as they say. So, congratulations, Blazed. Jackbox. <laughs> Yes. Are they glazing one another? Uh, I'm still not 100 percent sure if glazing yeah. is bad or if it's it's. Some people are saying it's taken gassing up to the too too far, and you've right. now glazed like too much. Yes, yes. Which there's a sure. whole thing there. Which I'm I glad know. there's a distinction, but yeah. also I I still don't know if I'm using it right. No, which is the best part. All right, let's get into the stuff uh, uh, we have actually played, and let's start with where we're at in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, uh, there could be some spoiler stuff here. We're mostly just going to talk about where we're at with things and what's going on. But just be aware, we could hit some some beats. We're not going to go out of our way to be specific in them. Though, I'm trying to think of anything I really could spoil, and it's mostly what happens in a minigame at this point. Yep. Yep. Like, I mean, based on where we're at, like the stuff that happens around the par- military parade, kind of, but th- even that is not really any kind of major thing. Yeah. So just, just be aware. Um, we're going to talk about some of the, some of the story stuff going in here. Uh, I am at, uh, Costa del Sol is, is where I am currently, which means, um, I have left Junon or Junon and, uh, did, the military parade. I feel like it has been weeks. I've been hearing the words. Have you left June on yet? And I have. Okay. And so we're here folks. How many times did you do the parade? About three or four. Okay. Times. I think that's about the same for me. I turned it. I literally put it onto performance mode. Did you? I, I, did. Oh, I didn't quite get there. I almost did. <laughs> I did. I was, cause it's a pretty, if you, if you do well, so basically what happens is, did you, did you go through the whole story? If you don't do the super well, did you see the motorcycle guy get his award? Oh no. I, every time I didn't get you the bailed. high score, I just bailed immediately and tried again. So the first time I let it go through and basically that, that motorcycle team wins and it's actually a pretty good cut scene because he drives the motorcycle up onto the stage. And, That's and pretty good. Yeah. That guy, good. that guy's a character. Yeah. Roche. Is that how you say is, it? What was it? Roche or Roche. Roche okay. I don't know. Yeah, sure. Uh, so basically after that, I bailed every time I thought I missed too many, but it's long, man. If you ba- if yes, you mess yeah. it up at the end, it's, yep. Uh, did you did you get into the whole like um, what do you even call it like your kind of configuration of troops going in? Did you, did you maximize that whole thing? I nailed it because you know there's no way I was going to get into the parade without having found everybody, and then yeah. as soon as I found everybody, there was no way I was going to do the parade without doing it on the hardest difficulty. Yeah. 
So yes, I, I think I think I just took out all the other people that were the soldiers or basic rank people that had grenades, grenade, grenadiers and flamethrower people in there. And then you basically do the um was it the honeybee? What's the Yeah, it's the same it's the same mini game as the honeybee in from the yeah. first from remake. It's, it's, it's kind like, of a rhythm game, not yeah. exact I mean kind of like you're hitting button prompts on a beat, but it's so scattered it's hard to call it a rhythm game because you're not tapping out any kind of rhythm. Yeah, and well maybe there's a little bit of a rhythm. You're doing like a parade, like a military parade thing. So like you know, flipping guns and doing all this stuff. Uh very, you know, if you've seen stripes, maybe you you know what's going on here. Um you know the reference everybody gets. Mm-hmm. Uh and so it's you have three sections, which is funny because they call the formations by some of the summons. I right there's like uh, Bahumets. Uh, yeah, or, it's, yeah, yeah, it's all. Yeah, uh, and then you uh, have to do those sections, and if you get them, if you do them well enough, you get a trophy and a different cutscene and a commendation for the thing. If you don't pass a certain amount of, uh, you're in competition with other uh, platoons or, or squads or whatever. If you don't, then you move on and you don't get that stuff. So I did it the first time and I was like, ah, I bet there's a damn trophy for doing this better. And I looked it up and there totally was. And I was like, well, here's where I'm locked in now. Resetting every time I missed like three things and you have that, you have to do the cutscene at the beginning each time or can you just restart? You can skip it. You can skip it. Okay. Um, I, got, I got it down to about, I think, like 15 seconds from reload save game to be back in the game, the mini game. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's um, the parade. And then yeah. you're off on a, you take a beautiful boat trip. Yes. I'm I'm still on the ship. I I was hoping to play more of it last night and then and it went to bed very early instead. Um, but the it's the stuff with the Shinra presidents in the parade there that yeah. I can't remember. Rufus? It's, yeah, Rufus. It's not even like a spoiler. He offers he offers you kind of an armistice, armistice. Yeah, basically. But then shit goes bad, and he's like five seconds later is like, "Oh well, fuck you. Never mind that." Yeah, yeah. Like, that doesn't you, even happen. That's how it's going to be. Yeah, I just I don't remember how much of that was in the original game because I feel like every time there's something in this or in remake that I think was made up for these remakes, <laughs> I go look and it's like verbatim oh. taken from the original game. Okay. Like each little scene I'll, I'll look and there's like, Oh, there's the little pre-rendered background from 97. That's exactly okay. the same scene. Like they are maybe more faithful than I even thought. So I don't remember if that, that little beat is new or not. The, the only thing I thought was really that bugged me about that whole thing. Cause you dress up as uh, Shinra soldiers. And the only thing that bugged me is every other soldier's helmet, the goggles are over their eyes. And for, for cloud Tifa and, uh, Aerith, the goggles are above their eyes and you could see their eyes and, oh, it's yeah. not, and it's not like the goggles can slide down or anything. It's like the helmet was just higher on their head. And that really annoyed me. It's the, it's, it's, it's the classic, like any imbecile in real life could see through this disguise, but for the sake of the story, let's just roll with it. Well, for me, it was more like, Hey man, you're supposed, to, all these uniforms are supposed to be the same. You're just a grunt. How can you get a special one where the, the goggles are above your eyes? I don't He's like the captain. This. I guess. I mean, are they doing that for legibility in the scene so you know what character you're looking at? Okay. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. Definitely for sure. So you could tell because otherwise they would all look the same, exactly the same. So, you know, you could see more of their faces. But as somebody who like really- But then they talk is the thing. Eventually they they would talk and you could just figure it out. (laughs) Um, And I think Cloud is wearing his sword on his back. So, I mean, it's not like you're not going to recognize him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that they have special outfits. Yeah. Like Cloud continues to be this like kind of like- you know how cloud is it's like kind of taciturn downer yeah edgy bad boy type he's kind of whatever but i really like all the other characterizations in this game a lot like tifa Aerith, barrett I mean, the whole party like red 13 like everybody is like chadley a pretty a pretty fun <laughs> yeah chadley's fine chadley hates um my god it's, I've, been, I've been playing too much dragon's dogma i'm starting to forget the names <laughs> of minor characters Chad, chadley's chadley's irritation with my his AI little sister is, yeah. is kind of amusing in its own right. It's a fun game. It's like a fun in the sense that there's a, a lot of personality in that game. I, I have found this much more, um, cause my son's playing seven remake now and it's so much, I mean, look, some really dark and nasty stuff happens in remake, but the tone is so much more dour. And, and yeah. this, this is the writing in this, especially around some of the mini games is much more lighthearted and fun and funny. Yeah. And, and, it, yeah. Um, I entered the Queen's Blood tournament and I smoked 
everybody in there. Okay, so I'm still saved right before that. I've been. That's why I was hoping to play that last night. How much? How much? How much Queen's Blood do you get? Like a good oh, amount? Oh yeah. Okay, because I've been saying up to this point, every time you get to play Queen's Blood, I just want to play more. But then you have to go find somebody else. I think it's like there are not. Like there just aren't enough opponents, so I'm hoping I'm hoping to just get it out of my system with that tournament. No, 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 you will not, because you oh. you wind up playing I think about four or five rounds, and then it's it's a little I feel like it's a little too easy. At least look, I'm playing a buff deck where that builds off of the uh, uh, the Mughal Chocobo card uh, and Titan. Um, it's um, I think I'm about ready to switch up decks. I have to look up another guide to see what like the meta is at this level for decks. Uh, what the uh, but it's a it's basically a big buff deck, and I, I I had to restart one or two matches, but generally it was okay. It wasn't too hard. But when you get the Costa del Sol, they've got a Queen's deck puzzle type game where they huh. don't actually play cards against you. There's a set of cards on the table and you have like only like three or four cards in your hand and you have to play them in the right order. Oh, that sounds fun. It's super fun. And you have to play them in the right order to beat the challenge. Like, Oh crap. You got to play this one first to buff this card. And then you play this one, which debuffs that card. And I really enjoyed that. And that was, that was a lot of fun, um, to build out that deck. Costa del Sol, as you might imagine in rebirth is a continuation of like seven new mini games. Of course. Yeah. It's of course you literally put your sword down. Has anyone I, actually counted how many mini games there are? It's got to be dozens, man. Infinite. Like it's insane. The actual number. It's like individual ones. It's got to be a ton, but the number of that. I this sounds wild, but I would almost guess. Ah, I'm probably wrong, but it feels like I have played more mini games than been in battles. Uh, in, in yes, that's absolutely how I've been feeling <laughs> lately. Is like the combat in this game now feels secondary yeah. to the mini games. Yeah, and I'm sure that's probably not true, but kind Ooh. of feels that way. Is this I, a I, Mario Party? <laughs> I mean, we've said it before. A couple of the mini game types so far, straight up, have feel like they are from Mar- Mario Party. Uh, so did Seven just have a ton of mini games in it? Am I just misremembering? Um, like this many? It's been it, it's been way too long to speak with any authority. I mean, there's the snowboarding one. Yeah. The motorcycle one, if you can call that a mini game, I think there's something around the gold saucer, maybe one or two there or something. Definitely not this many. I, All right. I think they're like this. You know, there. I, I think there is a reputation for there being some amount of mini games in that game, but I don't know. I have no idea what possessed them to go in this direction. It, you know, maybe some of it's padding it out. Maybe some of it's, some of it's like we don't necessarily need this game to just be a pure jrpg grind experience uh, i, I appreciate the variety it's yeah. just i think that maybe the balance may have gone to swung <laughs> too far in the other direction I, I straight up know people who put that game down and just said yeah i'm not gonna finish this it's too oh, much really uh when the right around the time dragon's dogma came out uh, uh not coincidentally um here's my question about costa del sol is it yeah. a map is it a full-on do you have to go climb towers and fight fight the legendary monster variants and everything is it full on that and a bunch of mini games or no so at okay. least where i'm at well you, when you get to the island you do get, say chadley says there's a new summon to, to challenge and i think you do get new challenges but the part that i'm up to now i've traded my chocobo for a segue and i'm cruising around a much smaller map that has shops and um mini games in that map it's like a it's okay. like a resort town that you're kind of it's very much actually like um uh, uh, infinite wealth. Like you are, you're actually, you're getting outfits and stuff for the beach <laughs> to, to go on the beach, which, oh. huh. uh, the, where I stopped was getting Tifa and Aerith's outfits. So look, I don't know what, I don't know what they're like there, but I did get a sick beach outfit for cloud. Uh, and I was very happy with that board shorts. There's even a, there's yes. I think he actually can get board shorts. There's even like a, uh, um, rocket league style soccer game. You play as, <laughs> with animals and you play as red knocking a giant soccer ball around. Uh, sure. It's weird, man. It's, it's a weird one. I, you know, I'm still enjoying when I pick it up. Like I said, I think the tone is just lighter. It's just goofier. Yeah. Um, so you're on the boat, right? Yeah. So you have yeah. Barrett in his costume. Yes. yes. <laughs> which is that, like dumb and goofy. I, I mentioned, <laughs> I mentioned like the day reviews went out when the embargo lifted and people were posting footage of that stuff, uh, like a month ago. Like everybody was flipping out over the female characters in their bikinis. 
But in oh, that footage, that's probably the beach stuff. I haven't gotten to that. But but there. in the background was Barrett. It was like he was just like off to the side, not even talking or interacting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> off in the background of that footage was Barrett in his sailor uniform, and like that's what I was flipping out over. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is just incredible. Not that, only that too, that too is from the original game. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Does he get a little? Does he get a hook on his hand in the original game? I, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's that's Final Fantasy. That's where we're up to yes, in Final Fantasy yes, the, Rebirth. The year of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth continues. Yeah. Um, I, I, again, I have no idea how many... Uh, you mentioned it, but I forgot how many chapters there are, how short some of the chapters are, how long some of the chapters are, how many more re- full regions to you know burn through there are. Um, you know, I, I, you bumped up the difficulty, right? Yeah. Uh, so I'm still on the normal difficulty, and I do get the sense by kind of doing everything, I'm scaling past where some of that difficulty is because I'm, I had a relatively serious boss fight, and it seemed to go pretty quickly. And I think I'm going to leave it there because I, I'm not looking to make the fights any longer or you know prove my you know I'm, I'm okay with as much fighting as there is in this game, which seems like not a lot. Um, I'm okay with that. Uh, I still get a little bummed out when I have to go manage materia and, you know, do the kind of inventory tedium. I know, I think, or I'm pretty sure you can auto select some of that upgrade stuff. Yeah, you can. For folios, but I'm enjoying it so far. It's, yeah. um, you know, Final Fantasy. I, I think it's, I think it's better than Remake. I, I, is, yeah, is yeah. My I think so. Cents. I, I mean, I'll tell you right now, just from listening to you guys talk about it, you feel a lot more compelled it feels like to finish this. Oh, I, abso- I absolutely will finish this. I have yeah. to know what happens at the end of this. And I kind of had to drag myself to the end of remake to some extent. Yeah. For as like, for as much as I say, and we talk about the mini games the you move on, you know, remake kind of all took place in the same area. Yeah. And, the, and, you're, and you're all moving the side on quests, to different stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All the side quests and remake were pretty samey and pretty bland. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, very little change of scenery. It was kind of like, a depressing story. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a downer in a lot of ways. Like yeah. this is just, like you said, it's more lighthearted, it's more colorful, there's more variety in the environments and what you're doing. Yeah. Kind of everything about it is just a little more likable. Still have not gotten a new party member since the start of the game. So uh yeah, it should be happening at some point. <laughs> yeah. I assume so. I mean Yeah, just opinions seem now that the dust has settled very mixed okay. on what they did with this. So I was always going to finish this, but now I am extra dying to see if, what it is exactly that happens. If memory serves me correctly, there are at least four, by the time you finish this game, four new party members? Mm. I don't know where the cutoff was in the original. There's not, like nine total. Nine total? It's nine, nine. Well, it's nine total in the original, but two of them are optional. Oh, okay. I was believe. Vincent optional? Yes. Okay. I think Yuffie as well. Optional? Oh, okay. Quote me on that. I think she is. Okay. I, th- I think they're both optional. And I, I mean... Do you consider it a spoiler who is and is not playable in this? In this one? Yeah, because I, I think- would consider it a spoiler in this one. If you talk about who's playable okay. in seven, uh, no. In the original okay. seven. I won't say. I, I I know who is and is not in this. And I oh, won't okay. Say no, I want to find out. Okay. Um. All right. That's going to be Final Fantasy VII Rebirth for this week. Um. You know, I think I'm going to keep going to at least finish up Costa del Sol by next week. Coast, Costa del Sol. Costa? I can't remember. Uh, the beach resort town mm-hmm. um, by next week uh, and see what the heck happens there because there's some other stuff we're going to talk about, um, which I'm also enjoying playing. So we're going to take a quick break and come back with some of those games. Stick around. This week's show is brought to you by Express VPN. Alex Navarro, how are you doing today? I'm good, but let me tell you, man, the internet scaring the hell out of me don't trust things on the internet i use a vpn i use a vpn uh pretty readily especially when i travel we just got back from pax um anytime i connect to hotel wi-fi public wi-fi when i'm at home i'll sometimes use a vpn i have used express vpn i actually just looked it up since 2016 uh i've had an account with them uh, because look i don't trust the internet and i don't trust the people who are handling the internet might be asking, what does an ExpressVPN do for me? It creates a secure, encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet. 
So when I'm on uh, I'll, pretty much any of my devices, uh, smartphone, tablets, uh, PC, ExpressVPN, it has a little thing. You can see where you want to connect to, which kind of spot you want to be. It could be someplace near you, or you can uh, click a spot anywhere in the world. Click that. Now you're routing through that place. Like I said, it's pretty easy to set up. Put it on uh, any of your devices. I have it pretty much, I think, on all of mine at this point. Uh, ready to go. One tap, and you are off into VPN land to do whatever you need to do. Look, like we've said it before, you know when you need a VPN. I don't need to know when you need a VPN, but you know when you need a VPN. And I know when you need a VPN. <laughs> and ExpressVPN is there for you. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash nextlander. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash nextlander. And you can get an extra three months free. ExpressVPN.com slash nextlander. Thanks, ExpressVPN. And we are back. And the other game we're going to talk about right now, Peppa Grinder. Yes. Just fun to say. Pick up the Pepper Grinder. Uh, Pepper Grinder is um, kind of a, a, you know, it's a devolver game that should set the table. Uh, oh, I forgot. I forgot that was a devolver game. Yes. Yeah. How could you forget? I feel like it's got like devolvers fingerprints all over uh, that thing. You know, a devolver published, we should say, you know, that's yes. obviously not their development studio. It's a game where you get the core is the setup is very quick. You get a big drill uh, for yes. and, and you yep. can drill through the earth. There and, are ghoul pirates or something <laughs> yeah. on the island that sure. stole your jewels. Go get them. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was that was a game we discovered during a Planorama, <laughs> which I feel like proves the utility of the Planorama because sure. I'd never heard of it until we came across it on the release list. Patreon.com slash Next Lantern. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Very um, nice. But we found it. It's a side scrolling platformer that I thought looked kind of dig dugish, like in screenshots when you don't see it moving, all you see is like 2d side scroller character digging underground with a drill. Right. Yeah. So yeah. It's like, Oh man, did they make like a dig dug platformer? That sounds awesome. And then I fired it up when it came out. It's definitely not dig dug. No. no, you're not, you're not like inching and in, you're not inching in a regimented way through like square tile by tile through the dirt. You are like swimming through it. Yeah. Like surfing almost. Yeah. yeah, like you fly. Also, you you go in like arcs. It's all analog control, so you're not going in straight lines yes. up and down on a grid or whatever. You're it's all it's all very fluid um with the 360 degree control and the dirt all fills in directly behind you, so you're you're like just constantly swim. It, it might as well be water, quite frankly. Yeah, they're just zones. They are zones that your character can move through in a different way, in a fast way that you can't do as a regular character because you're ma- like when you're on the ground, you're fairly limited. But as soon as you're swimming through that dirt, like you can basically just fly. And the setup is very short until you get the the pepper grind or the grinder. I think your character's may not be pepper. Um, but if you go to like the Steam page. You can watch this really nice animated intro, which I'm just shocked wasn't in the actual game. It is a very CDI like tribute looking intro. Yeah. And it like looks very good and and what? It shows the basically the same scene that's in the beginning, but animated. That's uh, bizarre because like nothing happens in that scene in the in the in the actual game. Yeah. You wash up on a beach and some people are there and then they leave and then you start playing. That's pretty much pixel art. Why? Why would you not put that in the game? I, I don't like, know. It's nice pic- pixel art, but it is it is just straight up pixel art. Um. So, I found the so you can use the D pad to move around. I've been yeah, going I, back and forth between the analog stick and the D pad. Yeah, I got I got most of the way through the first world using the D pad because I really prefer D pad for two D games. But I can't remember what it was. But at some point, I realized I needed finer control <laughs> on the turning than the D pad would allow. Uh, I found it to be, I don't know, like. Something about the controls, I always felt a little out of control. I never never quite nailed the rhythm I thought I would have when going through the levels. I always had to like try and turn around and go back and get a gem if I wanted to. At some point, I stopped trying to get every gem. Uh, and on that first boss fight with the beetle, I sucked at that. I was terrible at that thing. You know, you have pretty limited health, maybe like three or four hits. And on that boss fight with the beetle... I must have done that thing like seven or eight times. I was really bad at it. 
uh, at first I couldn't figure out how to knock the beetle down. Uh, you have to, you have a charge you can get while, if you hold the button while you're in the earth to pop out faster, uh, and you have to use that against that beetle. Uh, yeah, then yeah. like the bullet like, hell part of it, I had trouble dodging the bullets and yeah, I was just terrible. Yeah, that, that, that thing shoots pretty fast and kind of leads you a little bit. I guess, I guess we should say it, it's very fast paced and it's very, it's very much like a mobility game. Like yes. You use that boost to kind of burst out of the surface <laughs> of the dirt to get like way more height than you could by jumping. And they require that all the time. Did, did you do pretty well getting the hidden coins? Cause those were fun and tricky. No, I streamed a bunch of it though. So I was just trying to kind of move. I was not super duper looking for that stuff. Yeah. There, there are also a bunch of like kind of subtle spots in the levels yeah. where you can drill into rock and get secrets that are not, they're not the obvious, like, Hey, you can swim through this dirt to like jump to the next platform or whatever. Like those, those are like weirdly easy to miss or at least totally. when you're not paying super close attention. Like they're not, they don't call it out at all. There's just like tiny little cracks in the rock. The first time I, uh, I went through it, I was like, oh, I got them all. And then it was like, no, man, you got two out of seven of them. Uh, and you can, I think in the options, there's an option to take the game speed down if it's too fast for you. I did it not. It's pretty fast. It's pretty fast at I, points. Um, they, start, they start rolling out new mechanics, like you get a grappling hook on some levels. And yeah. you see that, that comes and goes, right? Or do you keep that grappling hook? I can't remember. So I put it down kind of not too long after I got the grappling hook and did, I think, maybe one or two levels on the new map. That, that next, uh, You have an overworld map. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's like level-based. I kind of was expecting a Metroidvania yeah. for some reason, but it's just full-on Mario World style. Yeah, overhead one, worlds. one, one, two. Um, <laughs> Did you get the gun? No. Okay. Yeah. There's a, at least one. I only saw one level so far with the gun, but you full on just get a like machine, like Gatling gun that you oh, carry wow. around and shoot stuff with, which you have to use to solve puzzles. Okay. No, I didn't get kinda, that. It's weird. It feels like a different game at that point because you can't use the grinder. You can't use the drill while you're using the gun. Oh. So it's almost just Contra-esque for a little bit here and there. I, I dig it. I, like I said, I, I wish. It's cool. I wish I felt a little more in control. Because it, yeah, it the thing I was oh, sorry, sorry the the thing I was gonna say about the grappling hook is that yeah the, the, there are pretty serious sequences of like burst out of one dirt with the dash you have to use the dash to get to and then grapple but then you can only grapple for like half a second if you hold the grapple too long you'll swing into death ah. like you have to like grapple and let off to like kind of slingshot immediately to the next drill spot kind of thing and like rinse and repeat like five times in a row right type stuff like. It's pretty tight timing. I can I, I can actually see why they would offer that slowed down mode because some of the some of these platforming quote unquote sequences are really pretty demanding. They also let you go and add like pad on extra yeah. health if yes. you go into the store. Uh, you can buy I think at least at the in the early part of the game up to four additional yeah, health can. bars, which is how I beat the boss on the first uh, level. Okay. Because I was not taking that. <laughs> Something about the shooting pattern of that yeah. one was really giving me some trouble. Same here. Yeah. Was re- and so you kept that, you can keep that padded health even when you die and restart? No, it's one time. Oh, yeah, it's one it time. Oh, okay. In fact, you, if, you, yeah, if you lose it in the level, you don't even get it back then. Okay. Um, yeah, that stuff. Uh, oh, was that from like the gotcha machine? The yeah. okay. Yes. It's one of the two gotcha machines that they present you at the beginning of the shop. I think I spent all my money on capes <laughs> and, and hair and stickers and stickers yeah. and hair. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I, I like I, it. It's, it's I, well, uh, it's well produced. I like the music's fun. The sound effects are fun. The graphics are, the pixel art looks great. Yeah. I, it's just that like, it's the control that I feel like I never quite got to the way where I, where you want to be with one of those really tight timing games. It's it's a flow state game, yeah. and I think it's a thing that, you know, with repeated practice, you can get, I, I, even I started to get a little bit better at it as I, as I went along. Um, that said, this is the game that has pretty much confirmed for me that there is definitely something wrong with my left thumb these days, because there's a lot pressure on the stick for this one. And so, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I might have some kind of carpal tunnel thing or something going on, because uh, at a certain point, I had to put it down. Oh, man. Yeah, um, uh, age comes for us all. I, yeah, I, 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 I've spent a lot of time clawing my hands into various positions uh-huh. over the years with controllers. So perhaps maybe it's my time. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I I quite enjoyed it, uh, but I just felt never. I never felt very good at it. Um, may I'll try some more. I do. The gun does sound fun. I did get up to the grappling hook puzzles. And that's when, I, when they started to get pretty intense. Was like, okay, I think I'm, I think I'm done for a bit here. It is. It does get pretty tough. It's also very short. 
The game? Uh, yeah. It's it's only four worlds. I, I oh. beat the second world, so I'm, I got halfway through it in one sitting oh. without even realizing it. It's like it's like maybe a four hour ish game, four to five okay. hours maybe. Oh well, I bet if you're getting all those hidden coins and yeah. stuff. Yeah, you could definitely wring more out of it if you're willing to go back and get everything. Um, they seem only, to very much encourage that. Yeah, it, it's only fifteen bucks, so I think it's probably fair. Yeah, and the the world is like I don't know weird, like the little the giants walking around in the background and whatnot. The yeah. the the little it's cute steal a phrase from Dan. The little like goobers that are stealing your stuff. I don't know what mm-hmm. they are. Uh, yeah, it's neat. Pepper Grinder. Uh, I think it's on PC and Switch, Switch right? Yeah, yeah, I believe yeah, that's Yeah, PC it. and Switch. I did not get it. I replaced that fan on the Switch. Knock on wood, I think it's fine. I did not get it on the Switch. I call me a big old jerk. You're a big jerk, Vinny. I think- I would never. I would not. I will. I would never get anything on the Switch. I think I can get <laughs> elsewhere at this point. Somebody will call you a jerk for that. Yeah. Um, like, I don't play the Switch handheld, so why would I- and if I did, I'd probably just go get a Steam Deck. <laughs> then, I get it. Yeah, I get it, man. Like with, at least at least until we know what the backwards compatibility situation is going to be on the next Switch, I also would be very reluctant to get games like this on the Switch until I know for sure that I'm going to be able to play them on something else a year from now. Yeah, or like I don't know. For me, it's like why risk any kind of performance or slowdown? Yeah, on, on a thing that again, yeah. I only I only play a docked. Um, so I thought about it for a second when I was getting it, and I was like, nah, nah, I'm good. And also, I have the Steam link, and I still use, actually, you know, Moonlight still, you know, works. So anyway, that's a me thing. That's not a Pepper Grinder thing. Uh, like you said, $15, you can go grab it. It's Pepper Grinder. It's fun. You should watch a video of it. Go watch Brad's yeah. stream of it. He streamed it on uh, last Thursday. It's a good time. It's a good time. Uh, Alex, how's, yeah. your, how's your infinite wealth going? How do you guys feel about me continuing to spoil infinite wealth as I go along? Sure. All right. I just want to make sure everyone is cool with that because, I mean, I'm, I'm really in the thick of this thing now. Uh, last time we, t- we checked in on it, I talked about the stuff with Kiryu, kind uh-huh. of the, the status of his character and his terminal Huge illness bummers. and all that. Yes. Yes. Uh, so not long after that, I had arrived at the section of the game where you basically be take control of Kiryu in a separate party in Yokohama for a while. It's the same game, you know, but like in it, they they just give, open up the entire Yokohama c- city, and you're there with Nanba and a couple of other party members, and basically you are going around, and they make a bucket list for you. Oh. And that bucket list is basically you going around to different locations that remind you of things that happened to you. So, like, they have gamified the memories of a dying man into this system that gives you experience and, uh, like, upgraded abilities as you find these memories and go over the various insane things that happened to you over the course of seven different games. And are... Are they ringing bells with you? Or are you finding yourself like, oh, yeah, I kind of remember The majority that. of them, okay. yeah. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's like all the significant events that happen to carry you from, like, zero to six. Yeah. And, again, finding those memories and, and doing that stuff, like, gives you stat points that, like, unlock new abilities and make you stronger in battle. Did you? The dying wishes of a dying man. As it should be. Make you better in fighting. <laughs> Is he actually getting better? I mean, he's getting stronger. Okay. I don't think he's getting better, but okay. he's getting stronger. You still feel like this is going to end with uh, cure you for all intents and purposes being out of this franchise. I, 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 I'm really resisting looking it up to find you out don't, because no, I, yeah. I'm not going to, but like yeah. I, they have done that rug pull too many times over the years of this is the, you know, is yeah. Kiryu going to die? Is this the end of Kiryu? Like his journey, what have you? I think if you're doing it this way, you kind of have to let it be at peace at commit. the end. Yeah. yeah, you have to commit. Because Do- you're doing so much around this that to just say nah at the end, I think, would be really bad. Huh. Uh, what Can you tell me one of the moments that, uh, like, even, that I might remember or that a lot of people would know uh, that you kind of revisit? I mean, there's some stuff from Zero, which I feel like is the one you would remember the most. Okay. Because we, we played through it at Giant Bomb East. Yes. It was, 
I can't remember. Sometimes I get it mixed up with Shenmue, which was the one where you got stuff the about him chicken. running the cabaret club. Do you remember, I do remember that? Was the yeah, bowling ch- that- chicken? Was that? Was that? Uh- yes, Nugget. I believe <laughs> that is where where Kiryu was introduced to Nugget. Okay, was that a memory? They didn't bring I think back. that might have been the cutscene that made me say, I need to play this somehow, whether it's for <laughs> content or not. Uh, so you're still enjoying it? Yes, very much so. That whole chapter is genuinely very good, and they are treating what could be an incredibly weird and awkward feeling mechanic into something that feels like it actually belongs in the context of all of this, and mm. they are not doing it dirty. You know, that stuff's interesting because I, you know, obviously Kiryu is not a real person, but it's, I, I wonder if you write that stuff when you're getting ready to segue out of a, of a character that has been near and dear to fans and producers for a long time. If you, you know, you feel like you're saying goodbye to this character, uh, so it can come off as pretty heartfelt, you know? Yeah. And again, they've had multiple chances to just let him go <laughs> yeah. and have taken none of them. Uh-huh. Up to this point, yeah. so if they're if they're serious, yes. I think they're doing it the right way. Okay, uh, remains to be seen. Yes, uh, that's infinite wealth. Uh, everybody. Also, got- oh, yeah. One more thing I forgot to mention. I've gotten really into the Sujimon battling, and that is not a thing I expected whatsoever going into this. You mentioned that last time we checked in too. That uh, <laughs> you're. I think it's the thing that made me finally understand why people like Pokemon. <gasps> Does that mean you're into Pokemon as well? No. Oh, okay. Apparently, I only like it when I am battling scumbags and not uh, squishy cartoon animals. Uh, you don't did, know. You, uh, did you say, like, I think it was like weeks ago at this point, there's more to the Sujimon stuff than in the first, or not first game, but the last game that had it? There's a whole, I mean, uh, apart from the arena where you can just go and battle people and then there's, like, random battlers around the area, uh, there's a whole storyline about a quartet of uh, Sujimon battling overlords. Uh, that you have to take down one by one. Sujimon. That's and again for people who don't know, like Alex implied, it is your collect them all. Um, do you do you have a, a Sujimon you you throw out Su- there? Sujidex. Yeah. Do you have a Sujidex and a Sujiball? There is in fact a Sujidex, uh, <laughs> and you don't really throw them out in a ball because they are technically human <laughs> beings. Yeah. Though again, their agency is somewhat questionable. Um, but. There are a wide variety of them. I have at least two robots. Uh, I have a guy that is just a giant basketball with sunglasses. Um, there's a handful of others that are very good, but also just like weird monsters. Okay. Uh, didn't it, didn't it's a mix. Like, sorry, and, and like a dragon, didn't they give it some kind of like scientific context? Didn't you? Have, wasn't there like some researcher who approaches you that was like... You were like, cataloging hey, I'm, them. I'm studying all these low lowlifes, and I need you to like help me build out this taxonomy of dirtbags. Yeah. Of dirtbags and perverts, yes. And now, I mean, look, this is a game that has an entire mini game that is just dedicated to pervert photography. And I mean, I don't mean like doing perverted things. I mean photographing actual perverts in the wild like there is a pokemon (laughs) snap element to this game as well okay so they're going all the way in on the pokemon stuff and suji battling i don't know why i like it but i do and it (laughs) is maybe the second or third most important mini game in the game so somehow that's the one that got me don't know why i like it but i do if i had a nickel for every time i said that about a game yeah. Uh well speaking about speaking of a game where I think I know why I like it, but I'm not sure if I will continue to like it the whole way through. Dragon's Dogma continued to pick that up and uh not do a ton with it. I haven't played as much as I probably would have liked. Um I kind of spent more of my time with Final Fantasy than Dragon's Dogma. But I still I haven't hit the point where it has gotten old and boring. Maybe it's because um you know, I've seen the Depending on which day of the week I look at the internet, I feel like people really have turned on Dragon Dogma, have turned and turned back on Dragon's Dogma, have never been on. A lot of peaks on. and valleys, not a lot of middle. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have heard, you know, I think I mentioned this last time, a lot of people are being like, a very thin story, you know, we talked about this last time, you know, character variety and stuff like that. I haven't hit that point yet where I'm, I'm super bored or feel like uh, I'm just kind of grinding it out there. Uh, they put that patch out. It didn't really make too much of a difference for me. Uh, Boyle's still gone for good. Uh, it sounds like that new 
uh, replace your save data is out there. I was going to say start a new game, but I think it is really just a race, an easier way to erase your save data and overwrite it. Right. Uh, not open up a new slot, which I'm going to tell you as much as I think that stinks and maybe it's in the ethos of the design of this game. I would have felt really bad if I had only waited a week to delete Boyle and Boyle could have lived on somewhere. Uh, because sure. the more I think about it, the more, if I ever wanted to recreate that character probably would be very hard given what I think might be the randomization in the facial features that you oh. get, you know, when you get that, that three by three grid. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I think the, I think the starting faces are all fixed every time. But probably. Yeah, I guess the, but the, yeah, you're probably right that that variations of the one you pick part is truly random. I almost want to try it, but again, I would have to delete my current save now, which I'm not going to yeah. do. Um, so, uh, Boyle, no. Boyle belongs to the ages now. Yeah. Boyle, Boyle did his, uh, his big old spin drop to de- to destiny. Uh, yeah, I, I still dig what's going on there. Uh, it's what, what a weird game. I, I apparently did very, or sold very well. Um, I think where they just announced like two and a half million so, to date, something like pretty, that. And I don't know what strong the, start, but their budget I'll is say it or, again these days, a game that clips well, generally ships well. Generally ships well. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We'll go with that. Man, That's pretty like good. Three good titles for this podcast in the last five minutes. I don't know what to pick. <laughs> Taxonomy of perverts. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't know why I like it, but I like it. Uh huh. And then that one, which uh, I've just forgotten. Uh, there's that new game too. What is it? Censored content? Uh, the uh, the uh, content warning? Um, I think it's called, which looks like a lethal company, but you actually film, you film your party getting into trouble. Have you guys seen the trailers for that? No. Um, I think, it, I think it's called content, content. Warning. I haven't played it yet. I saw it. It was the one that was like free, uh, free for a couple of oh, days. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Yes. I remember oh, this. Was it something spook tube, something, something. I, th- I think it's called I don't know if that's, content warning. I think, I think spook tube is the fake YouTube in the game. Um, yes, that's right. Content warning is the name of the actual game. So I haven't played it. It looks very fun, uh, or at least the trailers look very fun. Um, and I immediately messaged Abby to be like, "Hey, this is free. You should just grab this right now. We're definitely gonna be playing this at some point." Yeah, um, I I had like practically thought about putting that in the news. I've never seen anybody do that before. They literally just made the game free for the first twenty four hours. Yeah, seemingly as a way to just goose not just install numbers but like user reviews, activity, just all the stuff that would get it boosted algorithmically on Steam. And now like, it's $8 on Steam. Yeah. Like, that seems brilliant if you just need to get people talking about your game. I, I, I wonder if Valve allows that to continue. I don't know. I haven't, um, I haven't seen too much about this game. I didn't look too deep into the development of it. Like, is it a meme game? Is it what, what's going on? Where did it come from? But on the Steam page, it's got kind of like five developers attached to it, which hmm. is like kind of a weird thing uh, that I've never heard of i don't know if they're just like people who made the game or or what or or how this thing came about but um it looked kind of interesting um again didn't play it It it's just just talking about it but that's kind of it for what i got up to uh this weekend again egg hunts birthday parties uh egg hunts a game yeah uh finding uh uh cactuar in uh photos of cactuar in final fantasy um Finding and photos of perverts in Hawaii. Finding uh, in fake Hawaii. Taking in photos things. of yeah. of of perverts in I, Hawaii. I don't I don't know what Cactuar is up to. You know he's he's kind of. They. Looks, I think every once in a while one of those perverts might make a Cactuar pose. I'm not yeah. sure. There's a lot of posing and a lot of gyrating. I've heard Cactuar is a real prick. He's real pr- prick. He's no. nailed it. He's nailed I'm not. I won't. I won't it's, dignify it's, that. He's got. He's got no. no He's got no spine. He's uh, uh anyway. Cactuar. No, he does. He's right. got he's, he's got more spine than most. Actually, yeah, he's got a lot of spines. He's he's actually a really good card in, <laughs> in Queen's Blood. He's my opener. He's the first card I play in my deck. Uh, if I no Cactuars in the deck, flush him down the toilet, get a whole new deck. Is what was happens. Yeah. I can respect that. Yeah. Uh, anything else you guys got? Not at the moment. Yeah, I was I was gonna finish Princess Peace Showtime. Didn't have time. Didn't have didn't have Showtime. I put like five like several hours into like like a dragon infinite wealth like that has i i'm i'm going to finish that thing i need to do, do that you know if as you're soon near as possible any kind no. of conclusion no i'm oh. definitely not oh, okay okay <laughs> i'm back Long in hawaii games. again but i'm definitely not near the end i'm you know it, we're gonna have this is gonna be probably the cadence for a couple of weeks here uh as we get through april not too much it's a lighter release month. month pretty pretty light april yeah which is good because there's 
tons of stuff, big games that I think we want to get through before the rest of the stuff starts. I think I might finally fire up that Persona 3 remake. Oh, hell yeah. All right. Now that I'm just, deep in it, I just need an alternating just thing. Throw two another RPG, JRPG on. Two long RPGs at the same time. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sitting here playing Final Fantasy and Dragon's Dogma. So exactly. Yeah. So let me do the other two. <laughs> That's video games live. now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about some news. So stick around. And we are back. And it is time for the news. Now, before we get into the stories that we actually have looked at or, or pulled in, I wanted to mention this one that I had watched, this video I'd watched yesterday. I saw it across my RSS feed for um, basically trying to get legal action for games that are shutting down or shut down servers and don't allow you to play them. And this is kind of inspired by the crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is, uh, again, everyone's I, favorite. Uh, I don't have too much information about here. I'm just mentioning it if people want to go look it up or keep an eye on it it's ross scott i guess runs a a a channel called accursed farms and has a whole video about how he wants to get this moving to basically let people who buy a game continue playing that game even if the server side or even if the server stuff shuts down basically very upset about uh what ownership of a game means in 2024 as we've talked about here and I mm-hmm. think it's I think it's a very relevant issue. Uh, yeah, I, it is. I don't know what kind of feasibility this has, and what level of tooth and nail companies will fight against this with. But every every one of them. Yeah, I think spir- like at least spiritually, I I respect what this person is doing <laughs> and pushing for. Uh, maybe not for the crew, but I get it. <laughs> so, uh, from what I could tell from the video I watched last night, as I was <laughs> rendering out stuff. Uh, it's uh the crew is the vehicle pun intended yes uh to get there not necessarily the kind of uh uh, thing we have to hold on to with dear life gotta save the crew one (laughs) yeah right um so some of the just mentioning some of the things i uh that are in this bullet point uh, a few things that the game has to be left in a functional state the game must require no further connection to the publisher uh and that any thing you bought microtransaction or dlc should also be available to you after that game goes offline so basically it sounds like the game needs to be playable in some offline state left by the developer and it sounded like in the video from what i can quickly gather and again you can go watch it accursed farms um there were there was talk about maybe putting a clause in there that says or give the ability for someone with the knowledge to spin up their own server uh but i think that was taken out because I that. can see how that might be a little sticky, legally speaking. Yeah. Anyway, kind of interesting. I don't know too too much more about it. It's it kind of just started. There are all these um, places you can go and be directed to uh, lend support if if you want to go follow that. I'll be There's- curious to see if this goes anywhere. And I feel like it's one of those things that you know, the, according to the video that I watched, was like, hey, this is probably has the best case in uh, a country in the EU, like France or something like that, because the the way they handle consumer rights is much different. We, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the domain he has registered for this, stopkillinggames.com. <laughs> yes. It's uh, a little dramatic, uh, but I get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's easy to it's easy to just be like, oh, you know, they're probably covered by their terms of service or EULA or whatever, They'll, you know, whatever. But at the same time, now we live in a world where, like, EU legislation is straight up forcing Apple to change the ports on their phones and stuff. Yeah. You know? Or, like change app store policies and stuff like Europe actually is forcing broad change in tech these days. So maybe, and it, you know, um, this seems a little more organized and I I'm, give credit where it's due. It seems much more organized than just an online petition. Yeah. Like if you yeah. go, I mean, you know, he seems to have done his homework. Like you can click through to each of the countries uh, that he's dealing with here and he's got, you know, links to various governing bodies, you know, standards, bodies, stuff like yeah. that. Um, It'd be it'd, it'd be cool if some kind of precedent was set or legislation was in place where like you have to ship a game with some kind of fail safe like fallback mode. Yeah, if it's an online only game, like it's got to do something. To it. On the other hand, though, I think about like what if Destiny had something like that, but then you're just playing Destiny by yourself. Like, well, that's not that's not nothing. But at the same yeah. time, like, would I want that? Would I actually want to play Destiny by, purely by myself? Probably not. Or would you have to put again? I haven't done the research on this. I don't know. Would you have to put in some kind of peer to peer mode or the ability to host, you know, does that then get into basically all the protections that were in place for servers? But I think, 
look, I think this is thought out and I don't want to speak for this movement here. So people should go check it out on their own because I didn't take the time to uh, talk about it thoroughly. I just wanted to mention it here because I think those arguments have been made and, and that's probably been thought out or gamed out already. Yeah. Well, let's get into the news we do have here. Starting with Gearbox. We've talked about the rumors of Gearbox uh, uh, being sold off, uh, de-embraced, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. Gearbox bought by Embracer. Let me check my timeline. Hold on a second. Was it wasn't it, that long ago. Like it was three like three years ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, April 2021. It's just It's just been three years ago that they were bought by Embracer. Uh, so they're being basically being bought now by Take Two Interactive, with whom they've had publishing relationships for pretty much yeah um, as long as yeah. I can remember. It was, it was kind of like the one and only obvious guess once some, once the rumors going around were like, oh, a big corporate, big publisher is eyeing them. Yeah, hmm, who could it be? <laughs> is it possibly the publisher that's published all of their games? And it turns out, yes, it, it very much is. Yeah, there was a lot of loose talk when this deal got announced uh, about like. Take two getting it for considerably less than Embracer paid for it, but mm. I think the the way that shook out was that a lot of the money that was in the valuation they used uh, for the purchase of of Gearbox for, uh, by Embracer was in incentives. Ah, so it was it. I don't think they paid that amount in cash necessarily for uh for for the studio the first time around. Yeah, I mean yeah. this statement from Randy Pitchford quite literally. <laughs> He quite literally identifies himself at the beginning as a significant long-term Embracer Group shareholder. Yes. I was just going to mention that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sure you are a large shareholder. <laughs> yeah. After that oh, first and, and I guess continues to be after the sale. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously a pretty big deal. You know, Gearbox was one of the bigger studios in Embracer. Um, yeah. And, and take two now just straight up owns Borderlands, like Lock, Stock and Barrel, the IP, you know, like, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I I guess I guess it was wholly owned by Gearbox previously. I couldn't. I'm not quite sure how those publishing deals. I think were the publishing but. rights were exclusive to 2K. They would have either that deal either would have had to expire or they would have had to renegotiate if someone else was going to do that. But uh, the ownership of the IP was always uh, Gearbox's, as far as I can recall. Right. So now Take Two can do whatever they want with Borderlands. They could farm it out to a different developer or start making more spinoffs under different different developers or something like that. So according to this, uh, what they've written on, or somebody has updated the Wikipedia for Gearbox, it says, mm-hmm. um, take two gets Borderlands, Tiny Tina stuff, Homeworld, which we'll get to later, Risk of Rain, Brothers in Arms, and Duke Nukem. I, did, I didn't know Gearbox owned Risk of Rain. I didn't know that either. And, and this is where I get a little confused. The, the acquisition also includes Gearbox Software, which is Satellite Studios and Gearbox Publishing. Okay. Embracer will retain Gearbox San Francisco, Gearbox Shanghai, Lost Boys Interactive, Captured Dimensions, Cryptic Studios, and I'm not sure why this is relevant, publishing rights to Remnant, Hyperlight Breaker, and other uh, unannounced titles. Did Were those games published through some Gearbox arm? Well, Gearbox has a publishing arm. Yeah, Gearbox has had a publishing arm for 10 plus years. So several years. Yeah, yeah. Gearbox publishing has been a label for quite a long time. And didn't Gearbox put out the first remnants, I think? Oh, okay. Among others. Yeah. So that's why they Embracer still retains the publishing rights, even though the yeah. Gearbox publishing arm is going over. Got it. Yeah, okay. So they, just, they just kind of split some of the stuff up as they sold it off. And then uh, uh, worth mentioning here, also Gearbox and Embracer have announced layoffs as, as I think related to this. Uh, the quote here from Games Industry Biz, Gearbox Entertainment has announced an unspecified number of redundancies following its sale from Embracer. So. So Remnant was put out by uh, Perfect World Entertainment and uh, basically Perfect World Entertainment redirects to Gearbox Software. Uh, Perfect World is a pretty big Chinese company. It looks like Entertainment was their North American subsidiary and that's what they sold to Gearbox. Okay. Because Perfect World is still still exists and operates in China. Okay. Anyway, Take-Two now owns Duke Nukem. <laughs> that's true. Let's put Duke Nukem in Grand Theft Auto? I don't know. No, yeah, I guess you could. Something. Make a new I Duke don't Nukem. know that there is any gas left in that tank. I, I don't actually need a, do, a new Duke Nukem. No, no. No one does. Put Duke Nukem in Homeworld. Now you're talking. Th- that would at least be funny. Uh, best of luck to the people at Gearbox. Best of luck to the people who are being uh, laid off as redundant 
uh, during this this merger as well. Yeah, I've heard 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 just a little bit out of GDC that maybe a little more business is happening than was two or three months ago. Not not like, like in, in the sector. Things are still grim for sure, but like maybe some amount of recovery is very slowly happening. I mean, I would hope I would hope something's happening with the amount of real you know, grabbing the wheel and turning left to avoid the cliff, right? You know, right. there's. I hope something is happening in there. Yeah, I mean, you know, at the same time, like studio closures are still getting announced day by day, mm-hmm. so it's absolutely not like things are still bad. Or companies divesting of other properties they own, like yeah. the next story here. Yes. Yeah, I guess it was like end of fiscal for a lot of companies, so all this like reshuffling is happening. Uh, Sega is selling Relic. After how long? Relic's been owned by Sega for quite a long time. It's like, I think at least a decade. 2013-ish, they were bought by Sega. That sounds right. Um, But prior to that, they were THQ. And I had to go look this up because when when I was going over the stories, I was like, wait, 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 wait. Okay, we've got a story in here about Gearbox going over to Take-Two and they're taking Homeworld with them. And then we've got a story in here about Relic leaving Sega. And Relic doesn't work on Homeworld anymore. I forgot how that happened, but it all happened during the THQ fire sale stuff. I believe that is correct. Yeah, that was um, where they split Relic. And then Blackbird Interactive, the people who are making Homeworld 3, yeah, those are ex-Relic folks making that and they're they're going the to have to take your word for that one <laughs> they're they're the ones who are making they're the ones who made shipbreakers okay uh and they're the ones who made deserts of croc uh right and okay. they're the, they're the ones who are working on homeworld 3 not actually sega's relic who are the people who made um company of heroes that, yes. and that latest company of heroes and dawn of war and dawn of war and a bunch of stuff though the people who made dawn of war and a uh, don't quote me on this. I th- at least Dawn of War up to two might be the people at Blackbird. Yeah, um, I would believe that for sure. Uh, it's been a while, but still so they relic relic pretty pretty storied developer still for sure the name for sure and they um I think they made well, did they make that most recent uh, Age of Empires? I might they, be right. I think they did. Uh, they are basically saying in this divestiture, Relic is saying we will be uh, independent now. So it sounds like they are getting um, picked up by an investment firm. Yeah, I'm not sure quite what to make of that. Relic is one of the developers on uh, Age of Empires 4. Okay. But alongside Forgotten Empires, Climax Studios, and World's Edge. Okay, that makes sense. They're, and they're, that- now, they're now part of a holding company. Yeah. Um. um Sega, Sega also downsizing a good amount of their UK presence. Right. It was like over 200 people. 240 jobs across Creative Assembly, Sega Europe, and Sega Hardlight in the UK. Uh, for what it's worth, Relic does say that they will continue to support Company of Heroes 3 and, and the rest of their titles moving forward. They're going to continue going on. If it, In case you forgot, Company of Heroes 3 came out. Uh, yeah, not that long ago. Yeah, not that long ago. Uh, I think that thing came out and then there were just ex- immediately massive layoffs, like um, three months later or something like that. So yeah, Relic, Sega. Yeah, free agent now. Yeah, kind Everybody. of. As, yeah. I mean, as free, I guess, as whatever that means when you're part of a holding company. What is, I don't know. What does this do for Sega's Western development? I don't know. Like presence at this point. Yeah, I'm trying because to think. All the stuff they feels like they have that's doing well for them right now seems like it's coming out of one of their various Japan arms. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't. Know. How's that for satisfying commentary? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to look up what Sega is publishing currently or has slated on the books to see if they have anything. Um, like they, they, Sega was doing Hyenas, that multiplayer shooter at Creative well, Assembly that they canceled. Yeah, yeah. Well, last year. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what other like Western development sake has got going on. Um, looking to see, not finding too much here. I mean, these are Sega Sammy. That's exactly what I want. Mm-hmm. I don't know if um, did we ever get developers for that? You know, remember that like cavalcade of classic? Yeah, all t- reboots they announced um, at the Game Awards, Golden Axe, and all that stuff. It was yeah, Outrun, Crazy Taxi, Sh- Shinobi. Are those all out of Japan? I wonder. I don't think they've said who all the studios are on those games yet. 
Um, yeah, this is, it's harder to find Sega published stuff than I thought it would be very quickly. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, what, what does that mean? What was creative assembly up to? Just like hyenas, the, hyenas that, which they canceled was the last project announced, I believe. Okay. So they didn't have anything else that they were moving on with. I don't think so. I mean, they put out total war games at a pretty steady clip. Still. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there was one that just came out, wasn't there? Total War Pharaoh last year. That's right. Man. Sega published the, uh, like a dragon stuff in the States. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and do they do it internationally? Do you know? Do they, I think they handle it pretty much everywhere. Okay. Oh, the industry. Oh, mm-hmm. the industry. And everybody likes a good, uh, yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, again, Relic, Homeworld, Gearbox, mm-hmm. everything you need to know. Yep. Uh, moving on to uh, rumors and speculation time with this time with photos. Uh, Brad, <laughs> uh, we've talked a lot about what Microsoft's, I don't know what their plans are for the, their console mo- presence, um, oh. You mean you mean the new adorably digital all all or what is or what, what I've, I've screwed it up now I don't have the slides in front it of me. It doesn't exactly they? roll off the tongue. To be fair, <laughs> was it the was it the new adorably all digital Xbox Series X? Is that how they I described it? I think that's it? correct. I think those were internal documents. We were never meant to hear <laughs> that pitch. Uh, uh, yeah, that got rumored during the out of the the, the giant document leak out of the uh, Activision Blizzard acquisition hearings. Mm-hmm. Talked about the discless Xbox Series X that's been rumored for a while that they yeah. were, well, I mean, they clearly had designs on it because they straight up had mock-ups and those slides and everything. Codename um, Brooklyn. A site called Xputer, which I had not heard of before, uh, straight up has posted photos of what they are saying is that console, but it looks nothing like the little, the twee little cylinder thing in those slides. Yeah. It just looks like a white Series X with no disc slot. Yeah. Um, like- they're saying... Straight up. <laughs> yeah, they're they're saying that's it, and then I believe they said it's coming like June, July. Is their understanding? And that when you say they, that's X Pewter saying I believe that's the, right. Yeah, yeah, this site's reporting. Yeah. Um But what is um so when they say an enhanced heat sink, I understand what that is. What's a superior Nexus card? I don't know. I okay. saw that. Uh is that the is that what they call the storage expansion slot? Oh, I don't know. I've never Is heard it? that term before, but neither, I don't know what else neither have I. Uh, a superior Nexus card. Oh, I, that might have something to do with man finding information about that is not easy. That might have I mean, something to do with like the, the network adapter. Oh, that might be that might have that might be like the hardware that handles like network connectivity. So, it could so basically, be better, it's like Wi-Fi six. It could could be better Wi-Fi or something like that. Okay. Okay. I've yeah. Never I heard could, that okay. Term I can believe that. Yeah. Um, uh, and how I'm, much less will I be paying for this enhanced console? I don't know. <laughs> well, they haven't I'm, announced it yet, so I guess we wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not 100 percent convinced this is the final console. You still like, think this is these photos this, are not representative? Yeah, prototype. Like, yeah, it absolutely. Like, prototype consoles get shoved into existing or like similar casing all the time. Yeah, uh, this could just be some interim, like, development version. Yep, totally. it could be the final thing. It absolutely could be the final thing, but you know, I wouldn't it's not call like, it adorable. No, definitely no. not. But you know, it's not like those. It's not like those mockups or any of that language ever was supposed to make it out into the public. So. That could have just been, you know, in development stuff that they ultimately discarded to go with this much more familiar thing. But so if we if we do go speaking of those slides that weren't supposed to be made public, if we go back to the Brooklyn slide, uh, one of their bullet points is uh, updated technologies, all new South Bridge to modernize I/O, Wi-Fi 6E radio for better throughput, latency, and, and interference mitigation, uh, Bluetooth 5.2. I wonder if that comes on that Nexus card or whatever. You know, I wonder probably if that's yeah, part of that thing. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't know. I I feel like if you're getting rid of the disk drive, you probably want to go smaller. But yeah. I mean, not not just because it's smaller, but because it's cheaper, right? And like if the overall materials are less, you probably presumably could save on manufacturing. 
Maybe the cooling though is. The I was going like, to say. Yeah, actually, I was going to say. Like maybe they have actually realized that they can't reduce this thing significantly without impacting the cooling solution they've got. And I mean, look, it's it, it's a big console. Like the the Series X is a big console, but I would not call it an enormous console. It no. is not ungainly the way that in some ways the PS5 yeah. is. Yeah, it absolutely is like manageable in an entertainment center shelf context, where yeah. even even the even the slim PS5 is still pretty damn big. Yeah, so I think shrinking it a little, if you can, is great, but I think my bigger question is, if we're already hearing that they're having a hard enough time selling Xboxes at this point, like, what is a slightly better one actually going to do versus, like, an actual new console generation? Yeah, unless they're looking to get very aggressive on the price, but, like, Phil Spencer has been out there recently saying, like, hey, we can't, we can't reduce costs the way we used to. Like, I don't know if there are limitations on that. Right. How much are those disk drives? Are there, uh, How much are they could possibly be saving by not putting a disk drive in at this point? I assume yeah. they still have to license Blu-ray stuff if you put it in, right? Too. Yes. Well, but there's no disk. Well, I'm saying if you if you get rid of that, if I wonder if yeah, that, that comes that, off the that, cost. That I believe that would be part of the costs of having a disk drive. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, the way the way the way it breaks down on the new the current PS5 Slim is it's what is it? It's 450 for the Slim. 500 for the slim with the disc or 80 for the disc if you buy it separately. Okay. Just to give you like some very loose idea of what the cost of that thing might be. And the I just, I just don't know about it, man. <laughs> I don't know about any of this. This doesn't really feel like a step anyone actually needs to be taking. I think I think the the bigger question for me is just what this portends for the future. Mm. Like do the next consoles have disk drives? That's the question, really, no. for me. Like, in no, any I think configuration, the is no. Like, that's, like, that would be pretty aggressive. I'm not, I absolutely could see it. I'm not saying I would predict it. I'm not but, saying I want it, but I don't. No, no, definitely. Yeah. What, I, what I'm I, saying is, I don't know if they're quite, like, if they're quite bold enough to absolutely eradicate the disk on the I, next ones, but I absolutely bet that the base configurations are, are diskless and it's purely an add on for the next generation at best. Yeah, and it could it could be it could be as severe as you're saying. It actually actually could just be, hey, we're not shipping a disk drive this generation. I think if they don't ship it as a separate thing, at least, then I think you can trust that they have done the market research and they did not consider the number of people who need a disk drive to be mm. significant enough to do it. What if the form factor of this is such that this also this too will have like a modular front panel or something where there they left room in a bay for a disk drive if they wanted to add one in uh post sale and they maybe replace mm. the front plate or something and they're i don't know maybe okay what if the console was sold as five separate pieces and when you <laughs> formed them they made uh -huh. a robot that uh -huh. fought evil cool uh -huh. what if you can plug a playstation 5 in your xbox and play god of war on it uh -huh. if i take the disk drive out of <laughs> But I don't plug in the fun. switch. I we cannot recommend enough. Do not plug in the switch. You do not want to know what it does. Uh, can I can I buy a Creative Labs PlayStation Blaster card to put in my computer and play PS5 games on? Oh yeah, you got a uh, EAX sound. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. You come with a bleem disc. Wait until you're in an echoey chamber, man. You're not even going to believe what it sounds like. Wait until you play Thief. Uh yeah, I mean, or this could be like a very minor point on the Xbox Series X and S line that is just like, look, it's a retool. Um you know, we're, we're moving along. This is just the next iteration of it. This isn't yeah, the pro. Just, this isn't the next lettered thing. We just need anything we can to try to gain ground in hardware sales. So let's yeah sell a cheaper one. We ran out of disk drives. <laughs> we're just putting mm -hmm. together the rest of the consoles off the line here. Man, those like, disk drive factories must be sad right just, now. Like, like where did the S and X like prices converge? You know, like the, the S got more expensive with the one terabyte model. It's 350 now. The disc Series X is five hundred, but regularly is on sale for like four hundred <laughs> these days. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, where does a discless Series X end up? Because the Series S is already discless. You know, like at some point, yeah. At some point, does it make sense to continue to continue to have both of these? I don't know. Do you I mean, have? My, yeah. My instinct is as a collector's curiosity. What if like, yeah. this is this is not a model that is going to sell a great number of units? Because I think a lot of the people that wanted to buy Xboxes this generation did. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be Unless interesting. Unless they get real cheap. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this thing does. Yes, or where they price it, uh, in, or, or where they put it in the market. Uh, the one thing I do know for sure, though, please, 
when you're writing your stories or tweeting or spilling, spilling the tea, doing your rumors, it's disc with a C, uh, not with a K. If it's, uh, if it's discless, these are, these are round discs, not floppy discs. So yes, it's true. This console has no disc. (laughs) Thank you very much, folks. Uh, so that is the Xbox discless Xbox series X rumored now with pictures. No official word from Microsoft as of the time of this recording, though. I, you know, something's coming. Could, something. could, yeah, could could get get announced in the Summer Games Fest time frame, maybe. Yeah, it's not yeah. that far off. If, if it's yeah. coming out in the summer, that is like two months away. Yeah, I will say, knock sure on wood. Um, I I think uh, console wise, my PlayStation Five, you know, it's it's okay. Still gets a little loud here and there. Xbox. It's fairly quiet. My Series X, fairly quiet. The thing is just a little cube or rectangle, really, that just game rectangle. It just does what it has to do. My only beef with the Xbox is the startup sound is still too loud. I know why <laughs> they do it, but it's still too loud. Too loud? Okay. I want, to... I want a happy, jaunty little tune like the GameCube. I don't want the THX <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. No, I don't want that. Uh, our last story here, this is one I just pulled um, before the show here because I was uh, curious about what this meant and i was like oh that's kind of interesting if maybe not that's mind-blowing uh there was a story on kotaku which is reporting on uh, uh research from new zoo n-e-w-z-o-o that has some data on 2020 the year in gaming in 2023 and the upshot is people are playing old games mm-hmm. in 2023 so it's a really eye-catching headline yeah. This, this is the Kotaku headline distilling what that report said. 60% of playtime in 2023 went to games that are six years old or older. Yeah. Like, that's kind of the thing we talk about all the time. It's like, oh, like Fortnite and League of Legends and Minecraft and Call of Duty. You know, these like these are such institutions that everybody's competing with those. I never would have guessed it was still like the majority. Like, I knew it was a lot. Well, I, maybe maybe it is believable when you step back and look at that number, but still. Like, um, I mean, it's I, still eye catching because yeah, practically two thirds of what people are playing are games that didn't even come out this decade. Yeah, I mean, this has a real feeling of we always kind of knew things were trending in this direction, but it just kind of still snuck up on us because I feel like things have been trending in this direction. Every company's seeking out their one forever game uh, and trying over and over again to make that work, to make their Fortnite, their Minecraft, what have you. And I feel like now at this point, it's like there are just enough of those that probably captured enough people that will just play them forever. Yeah. And like seeing stuff like this and especially how old some of these games are makes me wonder if I am laboring under like outdated perceptions of how things work, you know, because it makes me think back to like, like the Activision heyday. Granted, Call Mm -hmm. of Duty was part of this, but remember it was like Call of Duty, Tony Hawk, like Guitar Hero, like it felt like empires rose and fell in that space. You know what I mean? It's like. Guitar Hero and Rock Band were the biggest things ever, and then they weren't, you know? Yeah, totally. Tony Hawk was absolutely huge, and then it wasn't. And I've kind of always just felt like these things will come back down too eventually, right? But, like, maybe maybe we don't live in that world anymore. Like, maybe maybe these fan bases actually have calcified in a way that these games are just never going away. Well, like, maybe, maybe Fortnite will actually be huge forever. <laughs> well, yeah. again, I... I think with a lot of the games we're talking about here, these are games where I'm imagining that a lot of these players also forged a lot of friendships and communities that yeah. like you don't necessarily sure. get from other types of games. And so Fortnite being so omnipresent and being so available everywhere, inevitably people that, you know, the ones that aren't already just playing with the friends they already have are probably making new friends and new communities in these games. And unless, you know, you know, things change for you at some point, like you keep those communities going as long as you can. Yeah. That, that's a good point. I didn't think about like, there, there's like, so obviously you went to people's houses to play rock band or you might like play Tony Hawk with people occasionally, but like you didn't have the same durable sense of community that you do now with all of the online tools. Yeah, yeah totally. It's also, uh, it's very worth noting a couple of key things here. They're, they're tracking, um, uh, monthly active users, or as they put it, MAU, the Mao, uh, mm-hmm. of these things. Uh, like we said, uh, those games, um, 66 titles account for 80% of all playtime. Five games account for 20%, 27% of all playtime. 
it's pretty hard to argue with free because those games are Fortnite, Roblox, League of Legends, Minecraft, and GTA Five, which I assume that is the people are playing the online, online primarily. Yeah. Um, and then um, eight percent was spent on new non-annual titles, according to their um, uh, and and even those are still sequels like Diablo and Boulder's Gate, but they're not yeah. annualized titles like Madden or uh, NBA or, or stuff. So I mean, I, it's this stuff is so striking because this has always been the video game industry as we have always known it has been about the newest and the hottest and whatever the thing, you know, the big new thing is, you know, a year later a game's tail unless the multiplayer is real good well, just does not have a lot of you know a or lot of world strength. of warcraft right yeah in like, the age or of an MMOs. ongoing game yeah. yes like a destiny or, or something but that's the thing is that those games started becoming more prevalent and those community tools started getting a lot easier to to manage and communities were building up around this stuff and i just i think that you know yeah it's kind of the mmo thing but it's with all kinds of different games now it's just the only thing they have in common is that you can kind of play them forever so on the PC side, the top games by uh, monthly active users in 2023, we got Fortnite number one, Roblox, Minecraft, Counter Strike two, and uh, CS:GO. The Sims four, which is actually kind of surprising, Call of Duty Modern Warfare two. That's three, actually not that surprising. <laughs> the Sorry, Sims. I don't mean to interrupt, but yeah. like that's yeah. I mean, the people who play The Sims will play The Sims <laughs> until there is a new Sims. It's true. Uh, all the Call of Duty stuff, including Warzone, uh, League of Legends, Valorant. Grand Theft Auto 5 and then Rocket League over on the PlayStation and Xbox. It's pretty much all the same, uh, but you, this probably not surprising. EA Sports, uh, football, football, FC is football club. Is that right? Yeah. Football, yeah. Uh, that's number four where that doesn't show up on the Xbox, but all the rest uh, is pretty much the same. On PlayStation, you also have Rainbow Six, Apex Legends, and Fall Guys. On the Xbox, you have Starfield cracked number eight. So, huh. yeah. That's the only like single player thing on this entire list. Uh, over on the Switch, Fortnite, I guess Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom. That's that's yeah. definitely single player. Um, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, uh, Mario Kart Eight, Minecraft, Pokemon. I guess you can say Pokemon is single player. Yeah, it's got some multiplayer stuff. Fall Guys, Animal Crossing, Hogwarts Legacy, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Um, Switch. Lowest average for years on the market at 3.9 versus the PC highest with 9.6. I think it goes back to some of what we talked about too with the changing landscape. I know, I know some people will contest whether people are playing on PC or on console and what's the health of those markets. Uh, I think you have to remember also that not everybody's uh, going out and playing on a 4090 that plenty of people are on very average. I know a lot of families that got, pretty average laptops during oh, yeah. covid i mean um for people and they're and what you're telling me you're going to get your kid uh something with a a, a 10 series or a 20 series card in it and they're not going to play video oh, games on that i had a friend like not three or four months ago talk about building their granted very young child like their first gaming computer and putting like a 10 series card in it you know, yeah because they play minecraft like yeah that hardware is absolutely still valid for a lot of the older games like this that people are playing. I mean, like all you have to do is look at the steam survey or yeah. survey to see the absolute bulk of the market on PC is on low end hardware. Yes. And right. You, like not everybody needs a fourth, 40, 4,000, 40,000, 4,000, 40, 40 series, yeah. 40 series to play games on. I think my older brother is playing on a 10, um, 10 80 maybe or 10, 10 something maybe he's in the 20s for hell divers and it, you know the minimum specs on that i think are 1050 so yeah. like you know also i i don't know where this rolls up if it rolls up under mobile or not if you're playing on like an android tablet if that rings up as a mobile or pc based right because i know a ton of people who play roblox even fortnite and minecraft on um tablets or or uh, devices and i'm not sure how those register if they register as PC or not, that's probably a good question for surveys or devs uh, to say what that rings up as. I would imagine if you're on iOS, that would run ring up as um, mobile, uh, any kind of iOS, but I'm not sure how it runs across other, other flavors of that. But yeah, tons of Chromebooks out there. When I talk to my son, people are trying to get anything they can to run on those Chromebooks, and those things are now prolific in schools. Uh, not, not saying you're getting Fortnite running on that thing, but you're certainly it's, playing games in a browser. 
It's a far cry from having to go to the computer lab to play Oregon Trail on that green screen <laughs> computer. Yes. So yeah, I it's, do, do, do you want to know how many people that participate in the Steam hardware survey are using forty ninety? How many? I think it's very few. Point eight five percent. Wow, yeah. really? Of the I Steam user it. base has a forty ninety. Oh wow. How about how about uh, forty series in general? Uh, the out? way they break it out is it's not easy to tally, but um, is it under five percent? You think there are only two forty cards in the top ten, and they are the sixty and seventy. Okay. This means we're first up against the wall, doesn't it? (laughs) In the coming coming revolution, we're done. Dude, I mean, if you follow follow some analysts on Twitter, like go follow Matt Piscatella and watch him tweet about exactly this topic. Like, hey, Zoomers like PCs and mobile. (laughs) Like, consoles are not doing great. And then look at the replies. Like, there are a lot of people that do not want to hear it. Yeah. I mean, I don't particularly want to hear it. I I love video game consoles like more than anything else in games and always have. But let's get real. <laughs> and I like, I like a PC. I like my PS5. I like my Xbox. They are devices I enjoy playing video games on. It's just at a certain point, you just kind of have to stare reality in the face and not just try and look away from it. Like people are just not consuming consoles at the level they did last generation. I a lot of families, and again, I've seen a lot of chatter talk about uh, all sorts of stuff, like you know, being in bubbles or not having a good perspective. But I've seen a lot of people, friends, uh, parents of friends, who a lot of them do have a, a switch for sure. Yeah, um, I know a couple who have switches. Also, got very cheap. Yeah, generally speaking, uh, PS fives and stuff. But uh, a lot of their, a lot of these games that are on here, the Roblox, the Minecrafts, are not are happening on. Either again, tablets or P- or or laptops, and a lot of the laptops also got passed down from parents yep. who um, then were working from home, who bought themselves computers, and they're like, "We, I, I'm going to give you this laptop now for school." I mean, that happened in our house, and I'm going to go on this other. And once you <laughs> once you do that, this all sorts of stuff is going on. Like, yeah, um, you know, this stuff isn't happening through Steam. Uh, or at least from my knowledge, it's not like parents are getting their kids Steam accounts. You know, they're signing up for Roblox because their friends are on it. You know, they're signing up yeah. not as much for Fortnite in the in the age group that I'm in, but definitely Minecraft, Roblox. The kids talk about Five Nights at Freddy's and all these other things, which they may be getting through Steam accounts. But yeah, I mean, that stuff just doesn't require a ton of uh, big hardware, to, in my experience, is what I'm seeing. Um, you know, I one out of ten, I'm trying to actually do the math, friends of my son have a ps5 or xbox series uh console in the house more 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 have switch majority have done a thing on a laptop Um, yeah or or again a tablet um tablets definitely and phones i'm not discounting that i if if the research came out and said 90 percent of of a younger generation is playing on mobile and and tablet versus anything else i would 100 percent believe that or they're just not counting that because everybody has played a game on mobile or a tablet at this point. You know, uh, interesting times. I like. I will. Yeah. I will cling to my consoles as long as they keep making them. Same. I but will I'm, not hold out great hope that there are many more console generations in front of us. Yeah, I mean that's what like Piscatella quite frankly said recently. Uh, I I forget what the specifics were, but like basically, I think he predicted like, look, consoles will probably continue to exist through like maybe twenty forty, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, or some, something like that. <laughs> I don't think, I personally don't agree. I don't think consoles are, are doomed in any near term because I think there's still a very big market, especially for things like a Switch that are convenient, that are that are closed platforms that you just turn on and you could just sit down and play. That, I think that's not going away anytime soon. But just more people are doing stuff from home that require things like Skype and, and calling and, and those things are just happening on a PC. And what I found is once that laptop is cracked open, not playing a game on it mm-hmm. is, is very not hard. an option. It's kind of not like once you, once more people have the laptop in the room. Yeah. I know a lot of parents that are like homework happens with the doors open now because it is hard not to, it's hard to regulate that stuff. So we'll see. We'll see how that stuff goes. Uh, like again, just anecdotally, more people laptops in the rooms of kids, not as much a problem because they think it is productive than putting a console in the room, right? Like a console not allowed in the room because that's gaming time, but laptops in the room because that's where homework gets done or that's where you know school happens. So, 
the kids are smart. They'll figure out a way to play Roblox. <laughs> That's the end of our market update here at Nextlander. And you can trust us. You guys playing any more Fortnite? All the time. Every night. <laughs> it <laughs> like, updates a lot on Epic. It does. It always wants an update. I, out of those top 10 games that we mentioned, did you guys play any of those? Not really. We are just... I, I have not played GTA Online probably since we were doing it for content. Yeah. Um, I play Minecraft once in a while with the kids. Brad, you don't play League, right? No. That's, are you surprised Dota's not on here, or that makes nah, sense? No, League's always been bigger. Okay. League uh, is gigantic and always has been. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Surprise Valorant's on there? or uh, That was the kinda, one. Yes. Yeah. Not, that not was the to, one I was surprised by. Not, not to like criticize Valorant at all. Like I know it's quite popular and... I've never played it, but seemingly quite good, but I didn't think it was that big. Well, that's the thing is I just don't feel like I hear very many people talk about it. Maybe I'm just not in those circles, or maybe it's a silent killer. I have no idea, Mm. but... I feel feel like the people I know who liked Overwatch definitely talked about it quite a lot for a while, but I guess the people who are still into it are just kind of, like you said, quietly into it. Yeah, they're using their energy to talk about how bad the Overwatch 2 situation has been. (laughs) Overwatch, not on these lists. I, um, I, I think the... Most interesting thing about this 2023 thing from uh, um, this survey is I could see a lot of this looking exactly the same in 2024. Like, uh, oh yeah, like I don't think uh, something like a Hell Divers, Lethal Company, any of those would crack into this. Um, Hell Divers might. I could, I could on see PlayStation at least being maybe on a long enough PC. timeline. Even PC, yeah. even yeah. PC for sure. If they make good, if they make good on that thing for the next year, yeah, I think it could happen. It could overtake Rocket League or GTA because those are the bottom. I, mm. Again, it needs a longer tail. It needs yeah. some time, but if it if it keeps it going, I could see it. Yeah, I'll be curious. Anyway, I think that's very interesting. Well, you know, Rocket up. League. What it did, like when Rocket League came out? Would we have thought it would be one of the most played games of the last decade? Is that game free now? I Which assume one? it's free on Rocket League. Uh, oh yeah, it's been free for for yeah, quite it's been a free while. for some time. Okay, yeah, that's the thing, man. Like, can't be free. You can't, you can't be free uh, until you start monetizing the heck out of it. And like you guys said, once you monetize and you're in that ecosystem and you have your friends and you bought all the stuff, you're never like, leaving. It's like switching phones, right? You're like, ah, oh, but I have all my it's apps. Hotel and California, stuff here. man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's Cradle. a timely reference. <laughs> Cradle to grave. All right, that's the news there. Uh, don't send me nasty emails about if you're sad about consoles. I look, I mean, you, just ended, you could have ended the sentence there. Don't like, send me nasty <laughs> emails. Like I, so, again, I'm sad about the way things are going. Like, don't get me wrong. It's not like I yeah. like this. I think trajectory. it's an interesting discussion. I know people get really worked up about it. Um, dis- now discuss, but it, it doesn't do any good. It doesn't do any good to deny re- reality. And it definitely doesn't do any good to shoot the messenger. Uh, let's uh, end the news there. Let's go on to emails, podcast at nextlander.com. That's podcast at nextlander.com. Brett Shoemaker, an email or two here? Uh, sure. Kevin from BC, which I take to be British Columbia. We'll okay. go with that. What the fuck is Kroll? What? A movie. I think, was that because we've been talking about glaives a lot lately? Glazed glaives. We did an entire stream, or at least half of a stream, where we spent a lot of time talking about Kroll and glaives. It's true. And Dark Sector. Yeah, it's true. Crawl, if you didn't know, uh, is a movie that came out in the early 80s. It's got uh, um, uh, the guy from Taken, uh, uh, Liam Neeson. Wait, Liam played. Neeson is in Crawl? Yes. I've never seen Crawl. Is Crawl actually good? Uh, no. That's a, that's a different I, I, discussion. Like, no. <laughs> like, I've, always, I've also heard the name Crawl for years and never gotten a sense of if it's actually good or not. Is it kind of entertaining? Yes. Does it have a sick weapon? Yes. 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 Is it in the movie for a long time? No. Oh, wait. Is the glaive not like the point of the movie? I don't know if the glaive is in the movie all the time until the near the end. This, I, it's been this, a while. This, this DVD copy, the cover on this DVD version is like 60% the glaive. Is it? Okay. It, it's huge. It takes up the entire thing. The glaive is very important, and it has a little like daggers that fall out of it but also there's like spider like you know it's a fantasy movie um yeah uh so cyclops very british some, one if i remember yeah correctly. there's like a very british looking cyclops with questionable makeup here yeah well yeah yeah uh should it's, people watch crawl <sighs> <laughs> i like crawl has a place in my heart 
It's been a while. Put it on the box. Crawl has a place in my heart. <laughs> Vinny Caravella, next lander. Put it on the crawl box. This guy could change into animals. He's pretty cool. It's like... I think that... No, I think that's what it is. Nothing about it is actually very cool. Yeah. It's not cool fantasy at all, other than the glaive. I think we should watch it at some point. We it's, should. We should absolutely watch it at some point. I don't we, think it's very good, but we should watch it. Can, can we watch mid-fantasy movies? I can <laughs> finally watch Willow. Oh, you've never seen Willow? Nope. Oh, really? Man. I don't think oh. so. But I think Ballad I read the book. Mad Mardigan. I believe I read the book when I was a kid, but I didn't see okay. the movie. All right. No, I mid-tier fantasy is arguably some of the most enjoyable fantasy to me. So, <laughs> Does Labyrinth fall into that category? I mean, I know people love Labyrinth, but... I'd say no. Is but, it too good for that? But I'm also willing to hear arguments to the contrary if anyone has them. I feel like that's like Labyrinth... Was it lauded at the time? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like Kroll was not. <laughs> like, no. I, yeah. Like, I feel like that's the differentiator there. Like, Kroll, people... There's a pedigree I mean, there. Yeah. The amount of David Bowie and Labyrinth alone elevates it far beyond anything Kroll could hope to achieve. Agreed. Kroll, uh, according to Wikipedia, had a budget of $30 million, 27 to $30 million, and made 17 at the box office. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say Labyrinth probably did better, so I'm going to say Labyrinth is not in that tier. Uh, Willow, I think, actually did very, very well, if I remember correctly. Like uh, Willow, I feel like, was marketed and- Maybe had- overperformed <laughs> for its quality. <laughs> Maybe. Willow. But then, uh, hey, Willow is not actually that good, but I had some fondness for it as a kid. I mean, it's got Val Kilmer in it. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not the best Val Kilmer performance. It's not the worst <laughs> by any stretch, but you know, yeah. the characters named Mad Mardigan, that's pretty good. You got plenty of B tier fantasy of that time. They, everybody was trying to, uh, oh, yeah. chuck stuff at the, at the wall there. I don't know what it was on the heels of. Is that like a Conan, the barbarian craze, like a red Sonia? Oh, I don't know. I think swords and shields and peasant stuff is always generally pretty good. And, you know, you can make a by the by the time the 80s rolled around, especially you can make a pretty OK looking <laughs> fantasy movie for not an insane amount of money. Somebody built those sets already. Yeah. Some of those sets were out there and, you know, people are practiced at it. So, I, you know, you could probably make something like Willow work. I don't think that budget exists anymore. You could not make something like the Willow series work, apparently. Didn't, isn't it like no longer streaming? It did not perform very well, I do not think. Or maybe it's still out there. I know, I know they definitely didn't make more of it, but I can't remember if they like straight up. I think they were talking about taking it down at one point. I don't know if they actually I did, think, but they, 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 they did think, say something to that effect. I think they did. I'm, there were Reddit posts from like five months ago asking people asking how to watch it. <laughs> Where can I watch the show without breaking any rules? What, wait, why would this? Is, it, got, it was Disney, right? Yeah, I think it was it got, Disney Plus. It just it got delisted, like a lot of other things are getting delisted off of streaming. Is, is that uh, someday somebody's going to figure out exactly what the financials on all that are? I mean, it's a bunch of tax loopholes. Is, is, is that just what, what it, it is. really yeah. was? Yeah. It being? Tax, tax yeah. write-offs. Did you ever see the Beastmaster? Oh no, that's a fucking movie. Yeah, so I feel like that that's and Kroll. That's a goddamn piece of cinema right there. <laughs> that and Kroll can be in a... But that absolutely belongs in this category. <laughs> yes, 100%. There, there, there's a couple of other ones there where I feel like if we can figure out, flesh the rest of them out, they're movies that pretty much all seem to exist maybe in the same back lot. Uh, so we'll have to figure out the rest of them. Yeah, that back lot is England. <laughs> all of it? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's... No, I guess that's not in the same video. Lady Hawk? Was that the one with uh um oh. that's the one with uh um uh Ferris Bueller, right? Uh Matthew Broderick is in it, Rucker Hauer, yes. Michelle Pfeiffer? I don't remember this one <laughs> at watch all. That. My wife likes Lady Hawk, but it's not it's not this it's more of a high kind of um, you know, uh King Arthur uh thing. Directed by Richard Donner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know about this one, man. <laughs> no, no, I mean, literally, I just don't know about it. Um, yeah. Look. That's interesting. I feel like when I see something that I've never heard of before, my immediate response is, hmm. Uh-huh. Maybe I should see this. Uh-huh. Look, Matthew Broderick, Rucker Hauer, Michelle Pfeiffer, you've got, I think we have to watch Lady Hawk. That one my wife will watch, because she was a Lady Hawk fan. Should we watch Gore? G O R E? No, G O R. I don't know what that is. It's got Jack Palance. 
Oh so, my gosh, this cover. I feel like I've. This looks like a every D and D you know book that was on my shelf in the eighties. Okay, we'll watch a different fantasy thing with Jack Palance. We'll watch Hawk the Slayer instead. <laughs> These are all fantastic names. All right, another email. Uh, one more quick one. Travis and Fargo with another thought starter. Okay. If, if an Is anonymous it about Jack Palance. <laughs> Sadly, no. Well, I don't know. Maybe okay. you had this performed. If an anonymous donor paid for it, plus the cost of any future maintenance, would you get all your teeth removed and replaced with permanent dentures? Dan Reichert write this. Yeah, is this from, is this from Dan? And, uh, no. Okay. No, I'm saying no, I would not. I probably wouldn't either. I think it's the, I think it's the future maintenance part that's an absolute deal breaker because the only reason I would do that is to never have to get maintenance on them again. If you can, if you can give me bionic teeth that you guarantee will remain in perfect condition forever, then maybe. Yeah, that would be the 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 tipping point for me as well. You would you would if, do it if you, if, if there was zero maintenance going if they, forward. If they could be perfectly straight and perfectly white, and I'm not, you know, I'm still fine with brushing and flossing, but yeah. I, I want a legally enforceable lifetime warranty. Uh, you know what? But, no, I'm not okay with brushing and flossing. If I'm if I'm getting this done. These teeth need to brush and floss themselves. Also, oh. my breath has to be perfect. Okay, every yeah, morning. sure. It has I mean, to have air freshener built yeah. in. Yeah, if that's if that's all part of the deal, then sure. Because that's the maintenance on my teeth, right? Like I'm yeah. brushing and that's flossing. That's the cyborg dream. Yeah, that's, I don't want the cyborg nightmare. I want the cyborg dream. It needs to convert whatever bacteria on, like convert sugars into delicious smelling breath, right? Whatever. <laughs> whatever those you remember those strawberry shortcake whatever's going toys? on in there it needs to fix that <laughs> yeah. remember those strawberry shortcake dolls that used to smell like that fake uh, yes. uh camel? yeah and that's <laughs> for some reason yes actually Cause, i cause, do remember that because that smell is imprinted on everybody it just needs to smell like that constantly which maybe is not a good thing but we'll, we'll make it work out i mean it's no worse than the smell of all that awful slime we bought with our toys in the 80s oh man i wouldn't want my breath to smell like that that's no that's not that's not good i don't know if i would actually want want my breath to smell like anything forever i feel like that's not good remember they still sell banaca is that the stuff you used to spray in your mouth probably not that, since i was 14 is, is that <laughs> is that like illegal yeah. now yeah, it's still out there oh you can they still sell those strips yes banaca is still legal bro you can still get it <laughs> we still live in the united states of america eh, still buy allegedly uh, you remember those listerine strips you'd put on your tongue and they would mm-hmm. dissolve yeah those were weird yeah yeah I never uh-huh. trusted them. No, there was it's like little thin sheets of plastic. I uh, trust Listerine. Listerine, you just swish it around. Yeah, you just swish it around. That's a thing I can understand. I, yeah. I trust that. Yeah. Bam, yeah, Banaka was gross. That's yeah, like, no, that was definitely like the uh, dirtbag teenagers. Uh, I didn't brush my teeth masking device more than anything else. That's probably why I had it. I had some Banaka in my Cavaricis. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, in my, it was pungent. It, yeah, it was it not was just re- minty. Pungent. <laughs> it's really intense. It was really intense. Uh, all right, I'm, I just can't stop looking at this poster for gore. Uh, it looks amazing. We should not watch gore. Okay, I, I, I want to emphasize: <laughs> we should not watch gore. It's okay. not good. Warning, warning, warning. It's a kind of not good that I think maybe we should just not do. Um, that's going to do it for the emails. Mm-hmm. All right, good. We covered a lot of ground there. Uh, we've got a lot going on over on the Patreon. We've got the Watchcast. We are in the throes now. We are in the second part. Of, well, not really the second part. Yeah, we've transitioned we bridged from one to another. Yes. We went from Ninja Turtles, which was our transition movie for hero movies of the 90s, but now based on TV shows. So now just the based on TV shows in the universe of the TV show movies. Yes. Uh, with our next one going up being Beavis and Butthead, Do America. That's correct. And you'll hear all of our thoughts on the series at large and also that film in particular uh, next week. And then following that, we will have a few others on the docket. That schedule will be posted tomorrow uh, or today as of the time this recording is going live. Uh, And those movies include Dragnet from 1987, the Mission Impossible movie, the first one mm-hmm. for, by Brian De Palma, and then eventually Twin Peaks, Fire Walk With Me. Yeah, I'm excited. Even though I know you have said multiple times, it's a much darker vision of Twin Peaks. I really cannot stress <laughs> enough to you guys that this is not a fun movie. Got it. Ready. I'm ready. Much right. like Dragnet. 
not a not a fun movie. No, I, it's it, the, the, there's it's a different kind of torturous. No, I like Dragnet, or at least All I right. remember liking Dragnet. Qu- uh, qu- very quotable movie that Dragnet. Uh, so you can check that over on the the Patreon. Uh, we've got the Ramble Cast. We'll have a Never Been a Better Podcast recording <laughs> sometime in the near sometime future. Sometime soon. Schedules have to align. Yeah, we're trying to get them. They might be a little bit closer to the middle of this month. Um, but you can go to uh, the Patreon and check out all of the previous episodes of Never Been a Better Podcast. The ones There's with quite Austin a few Walker, them. Jeff Bacalar, Abby Russell, Dan Reichert. Uh, they're all up there waiting uh, for you. You can find a tier that fits your lifestyle over there. There is one tier, though, that gets their names read on this here show. And Nextlander takes no responsibility if you are adored, recognized, or even uh, 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 looked at funny by somebody seeing your name in real life from this list of Mysterious Benefactors. Starting with Sean Miller, RRE, Infelicitous Rips, Kelly F., Brian Lucier, Skywarp, John Hubbard, Evan Cook, Mark Wilhelm, Jerry Lee, Deidre is the Queen of Onions, Gary Pejke, Robert Fisher, Bunny Crimes is tired, I think it's tired instead of tied, tired of being audited. If you are being tied in being audited, that's a different problem. Peter Reardon, Jad Rita, Statics, Fantasticasm 89, Razgriz 2, No Seriously, I Do IP Law, Hire Me, Brian Murphy, Randy Duax, Andrew Tiebkin, Alex Wu, It's Me JP, Edward Chick, Andrew Slosky, Steve Lynn, Matthew Herrig, David Campos, and Tyler Treese. Thanks again to all our mysterious benefactors for this week's, and thanks again to everyone who has gone over to patreon.com and signed up to support us. We can't do it without you. We just can't. If you're, uh, if you're out there, I want to remind everybody in the States, don't forget, because it's coming up, tax season, tax man wants his. Maybe you're getting something back. Always does. <laughs> it's you're just... really risking creating a negative association with our brand and tax season with how often we bring up tax season. Tax, tax season. I don't want to remind people of tax season. I really don't. No, but, but if you forgot, uh, the reason I'm remembering now and associated with the Patreon stuff is uh, we had to send out 1099s and a couple of people will be like, um, I'm just doing my taxes now. <laughs> can I get another copy of that? I was like, yes, you can. Of course. Of course. I don't. Of course you can. The reason I'm going to tie this back around, it's all going to make sense. By supporting us, you allow us to bring in other people that we can then pay to do fantastic content with Nextlander and then send them a 1099 <laughs> at, the, at the end of the year. It's all nice and legal. <laughs> so thanks everybody for supporting. Uh, we got to get Abby in there to play that, um, that content warning game at some point. That looks like a lot of fun. Uh, can't wait to try that out. Uh, you can go back. You can check out Will Smith coming on to join us for a bunch of hell diver stuff. I saw him streaming hell divers the other day. It's gotta be just killing it at this point. I mean, I believe, I believe he said he has unlocked pretty much everything there is to unlock. Oh geez. Like all the stuff from the ship. I think so. Yeah. I'll have that. Machi. Uh, we've had Patrick Klepek come by the Ramblecast. Jan Ochoa was just on the Ramblecast. Mm-hmm. You can go see him in video over at patreon.com. Uh, moving on to this week. I'm going to be streaming. Uh, my plan is to stream some Warframe coming up. Bold. It is bold. That's how I live. It's quite an undertaking. Bold. Um, Potentially. A couple of things I was thinking about. We just played Dark Sector, and I was like, man, I should see what the hell is going on. Can you can you get into Warframe in 2024 with no knowledge of Warframe in 2024? Some, there's a lot of the sentiment in the chat during the Dark Sector stream was like, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> is it going to be impenetrable? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Is this like an EVE Online scenario? I don't know. One way to find out. One way to find out. I'm going to try and boot that up on Thursday, and then we'll come back together on Friday. We're still uh, juggling around a couple of things, but we'll have something fun on Friday, so come join us there. Thank you very much, Alex Navarro. Thank you. Thank you, Brad Shoemaker. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back with another podcast sooner than you think, but we'll be back with this podcast next week. See ya!